Hey everybody, what's going on? Rob Sestrino back here with some special Big Brother postseason coverage. And it doesn't get more special than this because we are honored to have with us the winner of Big Brother 19 here on the podcast proper for the very first time. Uh, please welcome in Josh Martinez. Josh, how are you? What's up, familia? What's going on? Okay, yes, the whole familia is here. Uh, the first, whole familia uh, is here. <laughs> a, man, a man who podcasts about Big Brother 19 and the live feeds every single day of the show, Taryn wow. Armstrong. Uh, <laughs> say hello to Taryn. What's up, buddy? Hey, how's it going, Josh? Uh, what's going on? I, I I watched you and talked about you every single day. So now you're here talking to me. It's very strange. About you cool, too. let's get into it. This is awesome. <laughs> okay. And then you. also, Josh, we have a man who in the Big Brother 19 fantasy draft with his very first <laughs> pick on the board. No way. Had the most controversial pick. Everybody said, no oh way. my God, you idiot. You wasted your pick. Here is <laughs> you Brett are the Oldham smartest guy. <laughs> See, yes, I, I actually do know something. You are a genius. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> yes, I, I did pick you with my first uh, pick. And the reason I picked you was because I wanted to be happy if you won. And I knew I would be. And God knows I was happy when you won. <laughs> Thank you, man. <laughs> yes, jo Josh, you, you, ended, you ended my like seven win streak on the drafts here. <laughs> Brent, <laughs> yes. Brent finally beat me. <laughs> yes. All That's right. Well. Awesome. Josh, very happy to have you here with us on the live show. We're going to take questions from the uh, the chat room and anybody else who has a, a question for us. Hashtag RHAP. And then we'll just talk through a bunch of different stuff from your win. But uh, I got to talk to you on the red carpet after yeah, the finale. Fun. But how have you been since uh, you left that Big Brother compound? Dude, it's all, cr everything's crazy. Everything. I go, I step out, I get recognized. Just all the opportunities that are coming through are huge and they're amazing. It's awesome, man. I know that it's, it's short-lived. Season 20 is coming around. I'm going to be forgotten, but I'm enjoying the moment. I'm, I'm trying to decompress. It's not happening, um, but I'm just loving life, man. I mean, I won $500,000 and all the love that I'm receiving. So it's awesome. <laughs> Yeah. So I see, and you have an event coming up here in a, in a couple of weeks that, uh, can you tell us about what, what's going on in Edmonton? Yeah. So I have in Edmonton, I have the ranch. I'll be there October 20th, Friday night. We're going to have a meet and greet and then we're going to party the meatball madness party. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. No other way to start all this partying by going to the ranch and having a meatball party. They have like a whole, it's crazy. They're going to have like a whole buffet for the first hundred people and it's going to be fun. So I can't wait. Okay, you so yeah. you you're giving away meatballs. We're giving away meatballs. First hundred people to buy their tickets. We're having a meatball buffet. <laughs> does, does, does eating a meatball make you a meatball? It makes you. Uh, I don't know. If you're familia, then no. But if you're a meatball, you <laughs> act like one, and you're corny, then yeah, it makes you a meatball. <laughs> yeah. See, this is where Paulie Calafiore should have got in on the buffalo wing eating. He could have given buffalo wings away. <laughs> should have done it. it. Smells worse than a porta potty at the Jersey Shore after an all-you-can-eat wings competition. I mean, this <laughs> thing is disgusting. He should have ran with that. He should have done it. He okay. messed up. He played himself. He played he play himself. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Josh, have you watched any of the season since you've been back home? So I've seen clips. I've seen YouTube clips, things that people have shown me. But I, have not, I haven't had to watch a season because I have all my crazy friends and all my crazy family literally breaking down the whole show for me. I do want to watch. I know that some fans want me to sit there and they want my feedback. I don't know when I'm going to do that. Um, but I just announced my you now and I'm going to do it down the line. But I haven't watched any episodes. So, yeah. yeah, I think that's a good idea. I was going to, that was actually going to be one of my questions to you, Josh, because, you know, when you were in the house, you were saying that you couldn't wait to watch the show. Yeah. And then Paul, in his infinite wisdom and trying to control everything that's going on outside the house, which I think ultimately was his downfall, said, you know, no, you, you lived it. You don't need to watch yeah. the, the episodes. And then after that, after the show was over, you were saying, you know, ah, I don't know if I need to. I, I lived it. I, I, I don't need to watch it. But it, I, I'm actually, I think all of your fans would be happy to hear that at some point you are going to watch the show just Trust because we, me, we want you Josh, to see you don't need to watch the show the show <laughs> is gumpy <laughs> <laughs> no guys listen uh 
you know, I I lived the experience and I wanted to walk away from the house. You guys are giving Paul too much credit. <laughs> no, all, okay. all jokes aside, all jokes aside, um, I lived the experience and I wanted to walk away with the memories that I had with everybody. I think that it was a lot, there was a lot of tension in the beginning where there was a lot of fights, a lot of blow up, and it became really personal. Towards right. the end, I kind of made up. Man, Cody walked out of the house and I had nothing bad to say to him. Um, Mark walked out, we made up. So I wanted to leave with that instead of watching back the show, seeing what they were saying in the DRs, seeing all the things that were being said. So that was my my point of view of it. But now, you know, I do want to kind of see how the game and all that, because all the craziness that I'm here and I wanna I wanna watch, but I don't think I don't think I'll watch the whole thing, but I'll pick some episodes and I'll watch them with some That's of That's a good fans, idea. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I guess it is a little bit like Pandora's box, and I'm not talking about the thing yeah. that used to they used to have uh, in the HOH room. Because if you're walking away from the thing, you're feeling good, and you know you're on good terms with most of these people, then yeah. uh, I mean, do you really want to know? Oh, okay, this is what this so and so said about you, or this is what so and so did behind your back. And it's the kind of thing where you're going to end up just getting yourself worked up again. And then you're getting into like exactly. uh, going on Twitter, like, hey, uh, just so you guys know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's going to happen. I mean, I know I could think three people at the top of my head that that's going to happen once they start watching back. But that's the only reason why I don't want to I don't want to get into that whole mess. And just right now, I want to enjoy that I won, enjoy mm -hmm. some of the money, <laughs> right, yeah. take some time off with my family, and then when I'm ready, I'll watch some episodes. And I'm sure it's like a chain reaction. Like once one of you guys starts watching the season, then everybody's going to start watching it. <laughs> yeah, 100%, dude. Everybody's going to – it's going to be like we're back in the house all over again. Yeah. And I'm like, I can't do that right now. <laughs> Josh, could you give us an update on uh, everybody in uh, your real familia in terms yeah. of the hurricane? Is everybody uh, okay? Thank God everybody's doing great. My house wasn't affected. My neighbors weren't. My hometown, you know, some trees were knocked down and some fences. But everybody's doing good. Key West, which is like an hour, two hours away from me, they were hit really hard. And it's rough over there right now. Um, so I want to do things to give back and help them and, you know, try to do some relief things. My good friend has, you know, their, his dad's company. They're actually taking donations, water, water bottles, um, first aid kits and things like that. So I'm going to post that on my social media so that people from South Florida, if they want some of my fans donate and give back, we can do that. I'm going to be driving down when I come back from Canada to the QS and try to clean up and help out. But thank God, man, my family's doing great. Um, they evacuated to New Jersey, came back. The house was good. Nothing happened. So, yeah, everybody's doing good. Yeah, that was a that was a huge question that a lot of people were asking was like, um, are they going to tell Josh about the hurricane? Um, yeah. And your family decided not to tell you. Uh, yeah. do you. Do you appreciate that decision? I really that, do. Yeah, I really do. I think how that like how immense and how crazy the hurricane was. I would have received that news. And where I was mentally in the game, I was all game, 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 game. I would have received something from the outside where I would have been completely thrown off. And I was already having such a hard time thinking about back home and, and constantly thinking about my family. It would give me anxiety sometimes where I would have to disconnect and just be like, this is my life for the next few days. Big brother is my life. So if I would have heard that, I don't know what would have happened. I, I wouldn't have walked, but it definitely would have taken a huge toll on me. So I'm, my mom was smart on that end because I know that my siblings wanted to tell me. My mom said, nope. And she didn't let production tell me. So it was, it was smart. Now, in terms of the, your uh, experience with Big Brother, did, how did you end up on the show this yeah. season? So I tried out three times. Um, I know that people were surprised by that. I tried out three times. I tried out season 17, 18, and BBOTT. I made it to semifinals for season 17. I didn't get a call back for um, 18 or BBOTT. And then I said, you know what? I saw Paul's crazy self, and I saw Justin on – um, Big Brother over the top, and I said, listen, they're going to get this crazy kid from Miami one way or another. I did a video. It's literally a minute long, and I just went off. I was like, my family and this, and get all I did the whole Miami Cuban thing. They loved it. From there, went on to semifinal Skype call, and then I knew. Once I did that Skype call, I knew that I didn't think, I honestly didn't even think that I was sent to the house, but I knew that I was in because it, it was constantly, and they were calling me every single week. So, and then I was in the house. So, yeah, yeah. it worked out good, yeah. Yeah, we spoke with Robin Cass on the podcast the yeah. week of the finale, and she talked about how uh, loud you were during yeah. casting and how nuts you were going. And oh. uh, we definitely got to see that a few times uh, between 
uh, when you met Ica, and so then no, nobody's questioning uh, how much, big of a fan you are. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was bouncing off the walls when I met Ica and Dimitri because I had just seen their season. So to meet them, I was like, what is going on? I, I'm a huge Big Brother fan. Um, yeah. But I'm a fan of the game, but also people that play the game. So just to meet her and meet Dimitri, that was an awesome experience. And well, then hold on. Now, let's go back me. to that because yeah. you were then outed on Twitter uh, yeah. in a picture that Dimitri <laughs> had, uh, oh, had God. tweeted out. What? You really got caught <laughs> with, 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 with the, uh, at least your eyes in the cookie jar. <laughs> oh, uh, my. I don't know why he would post that. He's the only person that saw that. He's the only per Out of all the pictures that we had, Dimitri chose that bitch out of all of them. <laughs> Kudos to my man, dude. She's a gorgeous girl. And in person, she's even more beautiful. So, yeah, Aika is stunning. It's impressive. So impressive. Yeah. yeah, she really is. Yes. Yeah. Josh, uh, we saw you, you know, bouncing off the walls when you're going into the Big Brother house. But then we yeah. also saw you really uh, in your head a little bit during the first HOH competition where you ultimately decided to go after the Golden Apple. There was yeah. a little bit of a, of a controversy about whether or not you knew that Kevin had taken the $25,000 and thus would have had to throw the HOH competition as to why you took the Golden Apple. So can you clarify that for us now? Thank you. Uh, thank you for asking that question. As we know, we filmed 24 hours, and you guys see 40 minutes of probably like three days of stuff. Kevin told me that he took the golden apple as soon as we walked into the house. Or the 25,000. So, the 25,000. Yeah, yeah okay. sorry. The, he told me that he took the 25,000 as soon as we walked into the house. So I knew once his name was – once we were drawing names, uh, you know, we, draw, we drew names for our teams. Once I, Kevin drew the name, I knew that I had to um, – I didn't know what I was going into, but I was like – I have this guy on my team. He's going to throw it. And then I had Jillian and Elena. At that point, I didn't know who, how Elena performed. It was day two. Um, and also, you guys don't see much, man. It's crazy. But I was walking into conversations. Cody and Matt and Mark literally locked in hour one. They were locked in. They thought that they were brigade, the brigade from season 12. They weren't talking to no other guys. It was them three, buddying it up. They were the boys, and they were riding it to the end. So I walked into them into the storage room. And Mark was giving me things like, ah, man, you're going to leave week one. I was giving him shit for Elena. Like, hey, Elena's hot, all this stuff. It's going to be me you, and you. He starts giving me the, oh, you're going to go. And they started joking about that. So I was like, okay, so I'm on the outs right there. I wasn't really connecting with anybody. I knew Kevin had to throw the comp because he won the 25K. So and I didn't come here to play it safe. I, if, if I had the opportunity to save myself, I did. And it was a benefit because it bought me 16 days in the house. And yes. So no, it worked it, out. No, we I we had podcasted about that, and we had said that that was a great play for someone yeah. specifically like you, who yeah. was really in your head a lot at the beginning. Maybe yeah. you felt a little bit like you were out a fish out of water yeah. and needed uh, to grab onto a security blanket. And yeah. you know, the first week we don't get to see the first week of the live feeds, but we get yeah. to see the second week. But because the first week's like two weeks long, yeah. uh, you know, the first the first that first eviction there, and yeah. that entire time where Cody had to make you know nomination after nomination you were safe from the block so yep. i know that 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 helped to calm you down mind you what you guys don't see during um when it's not live cody kept asking he's like can i nominate josh Sorry. he goes can i nominate josh for eviction he's like no production would literally tell him in front of the whole house no he still has the safety they would have to remind cody every time that he was doing a nomination <laughs> josh has the golden apple he can't go on the block so i'm like hey it worked out if i didn't have that golden apple I was going to go on the block. Right. The whole house wouldn't have blown up. Paul wouldn't have depended. And, you know, I would have been home. Essentially, I would have been the first one home. You would have been, did, yes. Yeah. Um, I had massive anxiety, dude, even before I walked into the house. I had really bad anxiety. I watched season 12 where the saboteur was in the show. <laughs> the worst season to watch. If you're walking into Big Brother, do not watch season 12, please. And your paranoia will go through the roof. So I've always dealt with anxiety, but it was amplified because I didn't know what was going to happen. I mean, it's Big Brother. So that once I, once I snapped out of the fact that, listen, the worst that's thing that's going to happen is that I'm going to be sent home. That's it. It gave me room to play my game and start building relationships. Do you know so, why Kevin uh, claimed that you told him that you that you had taken the twenty five thousand? Because uh, uh, it seems it's a very confused. Because he's saying that, and I think to this day he's claiming that he thought you told him. Um, you know, you I, I don't know what you guys watched. That's why I want to watch the show. He he pulled me into it, at the at that point it wasn't the have not room yet. It was a room that we were sleeping in, and he pulled me in and he told me, 
I won the $25,000. Don't tell anybody. That helped me form a relationship with Kevin. I wasn't going to expose that. I didn't have a reason behind it. When I did expose it, I wanted to place a target on Kevin. And, and, you know, my approach was horrible about it. it. We got heated. But it was to – Kevin never owned up to anything. I love Kevin. We, we talked to this day, but he never right. owned up to anything in the game. Right. Kevin was always um, – Kevin was playing – not a fishy game, but he was – I knew that he was feeding information to other people. I knew that he was building a, a friendship with Cody and a bond. I don't know how, how big that got, but I knew that he was covering his bases on that end. So for me, it was just shady. No, um, he was so – Go ahead. Well, he was definitely. Uh, I want mean, maybe shady isn't the right word, but he was he was playing the he game. Was playing because, the game. Right. He was and I don't. The game. I don't even think he remembers he was playing the game because he's talk, talking to us after the show, saying you know that the time that he told Matt uh, that you know he, when he lied in front of Matt and said I didn't take the twenty five thousand dollars, I didn't tell you that 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 was his only lie. But of course, we as the fans know yeah. that that's not true because yeah, yeah. he was telling Jillian, "I'm with you guys. I'm with you guys. I'm going to vote to." And then Chris. we were stunned when he walked in the diary room and voted to evict Jillian and save Christmas. So <laughs> Christmas. I don't think he remembers everything. I heard that in an interview and I'm like, that's crazy. I knew it was Kevin. The funny thing is that I knew that it was Kevin, but Kevin put it on Ramsey's. I'm like, poor Ramsey's dude. Ramsey's getting blamed from the 25 K for the rogue vote. And it's like, I knew it was Kevin. I don't know if they showed this on the live feeds, but I'm like, I have a feeling Kevin's all doing all these rogue votes. You get me? I knew that he was, it, like you said, it's not shady. It, he was playing the game. Right. But, but within the I, house, it was shady. Yeah. It, within the house, it was shady because I'm, I'm, dude, I stood by loyalty. And I, it, my mistake is where I think I give you loyalty, you give it back to me in return. That's just how I was raised and who I am. And for me to see him talking, walking the yard with Cody, you know, to having these side conversations with Jess and things like that, I was just like, okay, what are you doing, Kevin? And I was taken back by it. I knew that Kevin, I wasn't his favorite guy in the house, and he wasn't always in my corner, but I right. did. He was untouchable for me. And then once I started seeing that, it was like, all right, I'm going to call you out because you can't own up to anything. Let's see if you can own up to the 25K. He tried to pin it on me, and it didn't work. <laughs> right, right. Uh, yeah. So uh, after, so you give, your, you give your word. You're playing the game hard the first yeah. week. You give your word to both sides. And yeah. we thought for sure you were going to vote to keep Christmas. But then the night before the eviction, you have a conversation with the live feeders, and you say for the first time, you, you, know, you start showing us some doubt that you're not sure yeah. that you're doing what's in your best interest here. What was going through your mind then? Okay, so – because you, because you were one big. of the, the few people yeah. that, that talked to the life feeders. A lot of people, even Paul, for the most part, only talked to the life feeders a couple of times. You yeah. talked to us quite a bit. Yeah. Um, so what I was thinking was I was in a good position as an outsider. So you guys watch the show. You guys watch the edited and you watch the live feeds. Right. Dude, this nine person alliance was not talking to anybody. Cody literally thought when he won that first HOH that he won the game. He formed his dream team, and he isolated everyone. So he isolated me, Kevin, Jason, Alex, um, Ramses, and Jillian. He isolated us, and I'm telling when I'm telling you, these people did not talk to me. Raven didn't give me conversation. Matt didn't. It was kind of high schoolish. It was like clicked right, up, and right. they thought that they were running the show. So I. I was like, do I keep Christmas because at that point in the game, she was with that nine-person alliance? Or do I take a shot at her? That's a number. Then it's going to be eight against us, against the outsiders, and then we can even it out. But I started forming a relationship with Christmas during those 16 days. And instead right, of her work, that. she started giving me information, and she, she protected me in a sense with that alliance. She said that she would protect me. She started giving me information, their pecking order, who were they targeting. She would always tell me that I was fourth or fifth on the list. It was ridiculous, the, the craziness that these people were talking. And I knew as a fan, that was going to blow up sooner than later. And thank God, Cody thought he was Superman and took a shot at two of his allies. So it worked out perfect. I kept Christmas. It worked out for me, made it to final three. So yeah, I think that, uh, you know, the way that they were... As a fan, I know that those big alliances never work. They they never work. Like nine people, are you kidding yourself? And you know, for Cody to say that he was a fan and he's the one that started the whole thing, I think it's a joke. Okay, Josh, <laughs> yeah. what's your reaction to Cody and Jessica being on the Amazing Race this upcoming season? Um, to be honest with you, I think that they're going to do way better in the Amazing Race that they're going to do in Big Brother. Big Brother, it's a, it's mental, it's competitions, but it's a huge social game. If you don't have good social skills, buddy, nobody's going to teach you social skills in the Big Brother house, and it's not the game for you. 
I think that where he was wrong was where he thought that it was just win, 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 and he didn't have to interact with anybody. He was just going to go rogue. He was going to win every single competition, and he didn't have to have social skills. He played himself on that one because I think his biggest downfall was that he didn't have conversations with people. He kind of shunned everybody, filmed his click, and thought that they were going to make it to the end. And even that, he didn't really connect with those people. My advantage was where I did form genuine relationships, formed friendships, and people started seeing that, and it worked out for me. I think that in The Amazing Race, he doesn't have to be so social. They're a team, and they're athletic, so I wish them the best, and I hope they win. Shit, it's a million dollars. Yeah, I actually disagree that I do think you need to be social on The Amazing Race in terms, I think that's something that people actually overlook. I think that they might actually do very well, but I wouldn't be surprised if they end up uh, getting more of a villain edit on The Amazing Race, a la when uh, Boston Rob and Amber went on The Amazing Race, uh, you know, way back when, uh, for those of you guys who remember that. Because I think when you play the game as aggressive as they may potentially play it and not really get involved with the social game in The Amazing Race, you tend to get really vilified from the other teams and when the other teams are talking very negatively about you uh you really come across as the, it's a lot easier to you can do a lot less to be the villain on the amazing race than on say a survivor or a big brother i want to ask you also uh yeah. just going back a little further into that first week that we saw you get into it with megan uh yeah. in those first couple of days and really this is a time before we have the live feed so we do have a lot of questions about those first uh, week or so let's get Why, into it i'm loving it yeah. Why did you feel like that Megan was somebody that you needed to out that early in the game? Okay. So obviously I'm 23 years old and I'm, I don't, I'm not perfect. I feel bad that I, I don't know if I played a role I haven't seen back. I have spoken to her and we're good now. And she was actually rooting for me, which was crazy, but game and we'll stick to game. Megan early on in the game. I don't know if you guys saw it on the show. She formed she she wanted to go against the guy. She voiced it to me in that um tra trapeze competition where we were hanging on. When right. we were sitting on the side, she goes to me. I don't know if they showed this. She goes, hey, those guys are tough. I think we need to take one of them out. So I'm thinking, and Christmas joined in on the conversation. Some of the girls were joining in, and I was like, okay, this girl's a threat. Megan played the game extremely hard right off the bat. She was forming alliances. She was go sitting in on conversations. She wasn't um, giving anybody room to breathe or even adjust to the game, just get to know each other. She played from the second that she stepped in. Instead of it playing it from a social perspective, she played an aggressive game. I saw that. Being a fan, I saw Megan's gameplay from when I saw her forming with Alex, saw her forming with Ramsey, saw her forming with Jillian. She pulled in, I think, even Jessica and Elena. I don't know if they showed that. But they were forming the girls, and they were forming quick. Um, so I knew that she was the head of – the snake, if you want to call it. So <laughs> I saw it as in, I need to out her. Now, was my approach right? No, I'm not perfect. I'm 23. I'm aggressive. I'm loud and I'm crazy. But my intention was to put a target on her back to out her game. Right. Um, I didn't choose the best words and I didn't choose the best approach. But essentially, it did put a target on her back. And uh, from a game point, that was my intent to... Um, you know, people for people to see her game. And, and, and even though it became personal with her... I think that from my end, it was strategy because I knew that she was forming this, this alliance and she could have done a lot of damage if she would have stayed in the house. It was unfortunate the way she left, man. I think she had so much potential. She could have played a great game if she would have stayed. Um, so you, you formed a, a bond with Paul pretty early. You end up voting yeah. with him in that first week. And then by the second week, uh, you, you willingly go up as a pawn for him and his HOH. Uh, how did that relationship start? When did you feel like you really solidified it? Okay, so I don't know if I can get into details about this, but um, before we go live, somebody touched base on it. Before we go live, we kind of have some time before we go on the live feeds. As soon as Paul walked in the door, I saw Paul's prior season, and I saw how loyal he was. I saw the game that he was playing, how he played all angles, and he was always giving information, but I saw how loyal he was to Victor, and I said, if I find loyalty in that house, it's going to be huge because I know who I am as a person, and I'm not going to change. I'm going to give my loyalty in return. So as soon as he walked in, when everybody was doing that friendship thing, we walked into that money room. We, and we thought this was going to be shown. Even in the final two, we're like, yo, when they show that handshake and that we said we were going to do this and we did it, it was crazy. But um, we shook hands. And I told him, you don't have to say one word to me. I know your style and you'll see, my, you'll see that I'm Yeah, we saw that. Yeah. You guys saw that? We yeah. shook hands. We shook hands. I said, you'll see, you see how I, I know your style and that you're loyal. 
I'm going to give you the same in return. And if you like it, then stick by me and we'll work together. And if not, then so be it. We did that. And he saw each week that I stayed loyal to him. And in, in a sense, he kind of protected me. And that's what I wanted. I wanted to, for him not to feel threatened by me, um, but to feel as I were, like I was an ally and not have anybody target me. You get me? So it worked out. But yet you had doubts along the way. And oh, we know because, uh, that uh, a lot of people were living for those doubts and yeah. saying, okay, is this going to be the week that Josh does it? Is this going to be, is Josh going to be the savior of the season and end oh, up God. shaking things up? Uh, because, you know, it got, it got a little predictable along the yeah. way. Yeah. So it wasn't necessarily like a clear path of you guys just like Memphis and Dan down to the end. No, no shot. Um, Listen, from early on, I knew that Paul was playing his game. I knew it. I saw it um, as a fan. I knew that he was doing his thing. I was like, dude, this guy's controlling this house like Derek. And one thing that's funny is that I had watched season 17 also before walking in, and I saw um, um, Vanessa's gameplay. So like, this guy's playing so good. But Paul never targeted me. So it didn't make any – Paul thought that he had me in his pocket. And if you guys saw my pre-show interviews before I entered the house – I wanted people to feel as if they had me in the pocket and they had control over me because they would never be threatened by me. So he felt like he had me in his pocket. So as long as he didn't target or affect my game, I didn't find a reason to target Paul early on. If anything, I wanted to align with him because I wanted him to, to protect me because he was a great competitor, but also I knew that you know he wouldn't go after me or flip this house. He had control early on, man. People just instantly fell for Paul and the love and everybody was connected with Paul. Right. So I knew if I gave him that in return, but he saw that it was genuine and I would point out other people. I don't know if they showed me pointing out Mark, pointing out Elena, pointing right. out all I these people. It, yeah. I literally would open his eyes to all these people and, and the game that they were playing. And I don't know, they, they, I'm pretty sure they didn't show that. But um, if I showed him loyalty and I stuck, stuck by him, I knew that he was going to deflect attention from me. Right. And that's what he did. I think did that you, you're, you're, I'm sorry, Taryn, if I could just ask, or go ahead and finish your, because I have, a, I have a different point in time I want to ask him about. <laughs> did you, did you feel like, uh, like you were his number one or that you, like he never. was very loyal to you? Okay. Never, never. I knew that I was not his number one. I knew that Paul was playing for Paul. I knew that Paul was only looking out for him, but I knew that he needed numbers and he needed people. And I knew that if I gave him that loyalty and that if he saw that, that's why I did the whole Paul move. I didn't think I was going to leave. And when he told, I, I believed in his word. When he told me, listen, I'm going to use the veto on you, I did trust his word, and he didn't give me a reason. Every time that Paul told me something, he did do it. Um, he never deviated from that. He never changed it. Now, did I see him play a lot of people, man? Yes, I did, and I stood by some of those things. But um, for me, he never gave me a reason to turn on him. And if he did, the, and, and he did later on when he wanted to pull the whole two votes the whole, you know, not get blood on his hands against Jason, that's right. when I was like, okay, this is where you're affecting my game. Now this is when I need to step up. Because right. early on, he wasn't affecting my game. He was doing all his things and pulling all the strings, but I wasn't, it wasn't, you know, affecting me. So I didn't find a reason to target him or go after him. If right. anything, I, I saw a line with him and stick by him and you're going to make it far. I think that that was really developed during the week where literally your worst nightmare happens. Cody comes back into the house and against all odds, Jessica wins HOH and you know you're in trouble. So yeah. the feeds were down for us for the point in time where Jessica won HOH to I think the next night. So we didn't oh, get to wow. see all of that. We didn't really get to see how Ramsey's came to be the other nominee. So can you just fill us in a little bit on what you were thinking when Jessica won HOH? We saw you try to go up to the room and they basically turned you away. Yeah. And did you think you were going home or was it an act the entire flipping time? Okay. So at that point, me and Paul, um, besides game, we did build a genuine friendship and a genuine relationship. That can be, we, we, you get me, that can be faked or anything. So I knew that he was going to look out for me, but I knew he was thinking game. He knew that I was an asset. The whole house knew that I was an asset. Once Jessica leaked to somebody that I threw her off her game, that's when I said this Paul's going to do and the house is going to do whatever it is to keep me because I'm an asset to their game and I'm always going to be a bigger target than they are. So that's how they were looking at it. I didn't look at it as in, oh, they think I'm loyal on this and they're going to keep me. I, I, I knew that I gave loyalty to some people and I had a strong friendship with Jason and Alex and Paul right. and Christmas. But I also knew that the house saw me as an asset to throw Jessica and Cody off of their game. Did I feel threatened and did I think I was going, going to go home when she first nominated me? 
Yes. But instantly, a few hours later, after I spoke to Christmas and Paul, I knew that I was locked in and I was going to be good because I checked in with Jason and Alex. I checked in with Kevin and I had Christmas and Paul. And then um, Matt and Raven came up to me in the storage room and told me, you know, we have your back. You're good. You don't have to say anything to us. And they actually told me, listen, we've seen you're an asset and we see how loyal you are. So they gave me their votes. Right. So I was locked in and I was getting that's when the whole act came where I just started playing it up. Right. Were right. You, I, go ahead. Were you aware of how close Jessica came to using the veto on Ramsey's that week? Because she she was like about oh, yeah. to use it um, and nominate uh, Alex next to you. Yeah, and Cody we, dissuaded her. From yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I I knew the whole time, and that's why I acted. That's why I literally went into the role of I have to cry. I need to be moping around this house. I need to make these people believe that I'm defeated, that I'm done, and that I'm walking through those doors. Because if Jessica just Jessica was a smart girl. I give her that. Jessica was smart. She was always on her. She was always on her game. And when she said something, her instincts were correct. So I knew that I had to sell to her and to the other side of the house that I was going home. Um, so I started wearing the sweater, the glasses, and moping around. Um, I think the worst move in several seasons was Jessica not using that veto. She played herself. That had to be one of the worst moves of the season. She would have. She would have used the veto. Put up Alex or put up Paul. I would have gone home. Hands yes. down, I would have gone home. She would have gotten another person on the other side out. And she got, essentially, we were all over Ramsey's because we were like, Ramsey's is running around this house. He doesn't have any, he's, he was literally talking to everybody. He had no real allegiance to anyone. And he was, if anything, aligning more to Justin Cody. So he became a huge threat because he right. became another number. Well, no, so, Paul was trying to get Ramsey's out like weeks preceding that. Weeks so too. like Jessica yeah. try Jessica nominating Ramsey's was just so nonsensical because it had been, it, it effectively became Paul's HOH. Because if Paul had won HOH, that's who he wanted to get out in the first place if he couldn't get out Cody and Jessica. Yeah, I I, I realized early on too. As you guys know, I don't know what was shown, but I realized early on too that Ramsey's was not to be trusted, man. Ramsey's was literally, I had a conversation with Ramsey's. Hey, don't blow up his sequester game, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, is he really? Yeah, he's yeah. on sequester right now. Oh, no way. That's awesome. Yeah. Good for him. All right, so then I can't, <laughs> I can't go on. I'm, <laughs> no, no, you can. I'm joking. I'm joking. Go ahead. Joking, um, yeah. yeah, so, so, Dude, I realized that Ramsey's wasn't to be trusted. I love the kid and everything, but he was loose with the lips, man, and he would just go and tell everybody everything. So I knew early on that I had to get him out and that I couldn't trust him. And once he showed me that, I knew that sooner or later he had to go. When he sat next to me on the block, I was like, Jessica, you just messed up. You literally gave the house what they wanted. We right. wanted to get Ramsey's out. You gave us you gave us what we wanted, and, and, and you blew your HH right. and went to waste. Somewhat. I wanted to ask you really quickly about this. One week prior to this was when Dominique was on the block. Yeah. And I know you were really good friends with her. You were one of the few people in the house to effectively not isolate her like everybody yeah. else was doing. I know you you consciously decided not to do that. You said, yeah. oh, I'm going to have a conversation with Dominique. I'm going to have a conversation with Dominique. That's yeah. just how it's going to be. Uh, I know it, I probably felt good to have that you were in Paul's back pocket. So you felt protected even if you yeah. did have a conversation with yeah. her. But how rough was that watching a friend uh, – um, be isolated was, from the house. That was extremely hard. I think that, you know, Dominique, out of all people, she didn't deserve that. I honestly can say that she did not deserve that. I think that with her, it just went left real quick. I think if she would have owned up to the things that she have said about Paul, it would have been a different scenario. And, you know, we could have gone, you know, the week would have played out differently. But, you know, that's when I realized the power that Paul had in that house. And that okay. became alarming for me. It did. I didn't voice it. I don't even think I said it to the live feeds. But that became very alarming for me. How he would tell people, don't talk to her. There's no reason to talk to her in closed rooms. And I was like, fool, you're playing yourself because I'm going to talk to whoever the fuck I want. Like, you get me? And she was a friend. So I wanted to check up on her. I wanted to see if she was doing okay. And if it got me sent home, I really didn't give a shit, man. I really didn't care because right. I saw the hard time that she was having. And, and you never was, forgave Mark because he didn't do the same no, thing. No, I didn't. Right? I didn't. I, 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 <laughs> no, guys, listen. I, you, I, I know it's funny and it's comical, but I really didn't. She was closer to Mark than me. She had a way stronger bond with Mark than me. And Mark chose Elena and Paul and the house over checking up on his friend and seeing if she was doing okay. Um, but that was just Mark playing the game, and he thought that that was the best move for his game at the time. It probably was. But for me, it was just not game related. It was on a human being level, and 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 I couldn't see her be isolated like that. And and that house turns into freaking high school, dude. It's 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 a shame.
Right, right. So, yeah. Josh, the next week uh, yeah. after you survive the block, then Paul gets HOH. But Jessica, during the live show, drops a bomb that she has uh. the power to protect her and Cody that week. And this is the infamous week where we were actually getting ready to do a live show. And that's when everything went downhill in the backyard and the oh, bullhorn. Okay. And you getting into the tutu and with the pots and pans at Paul's direction. Uh, I know I've listened to your other interviews. I know you're not proud of, of everything yeah. you did in the Big Brother house, but I, just speak speak a little bit more to that and okay. how you feel about that now. Because I got a lot of questions about that on Twitter. Perfect. So if you guys watch back, if you guys watch clips and things like that, I live the moment, so I don't need to watch. I know what happened. Right. I did not tell anybody to join in on bullying and attacking this girl and this guy. I didn't do that. I wanted Cody, not Jess, I wanted Cody to look at me and be like, this kid is so obnoxious. He is so annoying. His presence disturbs me. I don't want you to use the hex. Let them go to a vote. Use it later on for your game. I don't want to do it. So I was like, I'm going to have fun with this. I'm going to bring out the pots and pans. I'm going to call him a meatball, and I'm going to have fun. <laughs> oh, God, it's crazy. But, yeah, I was like, I'm going to annoy him. I'm going to drive him nuts and drive him crazy. This is a game, guys, and it wasn't a form of bullying. Cody's a 32-year-old man, and he made it personal with me from the beginning. I'm speaking for myself. Not for the house. I'm speaking for myself. He made it personal with me from the beginning. So for me, it was fair game. And I didn't call him a pussy, a loser, this and that. I called him a meatball. I banged pots and pants. And I did the da 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 because I wanted him to be annoyed with me. And he was. Um, I didn't want them to use the hex. Now, when Jessica stepped out and the whole house decided to call that girl out of her name and go off on her, that was a whole different ballgame. I never once directed myself at Jessica during that whole argument. I was going at Cody. I was like, Jess, tell your man to step out and defend you. Tell him to stand up for you. Why does he continue to – If you are messing up. I was just thinking in the back of my head, you are literally ruining your game for this guy that has burned bridges with everybody. And I said it in the house, and I don't know if they showed it on the show, but once it got personal and the things that were said to them and some of the things that were thrown their way about just personal attacks, that's right. when I was like, all right, this is becoming awful. Like right. this, is, this is getting out of hand. Um, you know, there was things that a lot of people said that I don't even want to mention or say who it was, but there was just things that got really personal, got really childish. And that wasn't game anymore. That was an attack. Um, I did my part and I'm wrong for it. I never directed any, anything at Jessica of anything. I told her, why are you standing by this man? That's not showing his face and defending you. And I was going at Cody because Cody had called me a moron, a fat ass, all these horrible things. Um, from the very be beginning, I was no, a doofus. I was a doofus to him. Like, I was an idiot from day three. So I had no respect for Cody. I didn't owe Cody anything. So for people to be like, you bullied Cody. No, Cody made it personal. He wanted to have fun, and I just joined the game and decided to call him a meatball and bang pots yeah. and have fun. I, I, and I, and I hear you on that. I, I think that, um, I, and I, I will tell you, Josh, that I'm like one of the rare species in, in big brother fandom because I was a huge fan of you, but I was also a big fan of Cody and Jessica, which I didn't even think yeah. is possible, but somehow yeah. I made it possible. Um, I, I think that where fans might've had a problem, just not necessarily with you, but just in general is that yeah. you, it, it, it felt really easy for you to go after them when you had the whole house behind you. Whereas but if the, the situation were re reversed and, you know, you were the person over there uh, and by yourself, I don't, I, I don't think maybe you would have been going after them. And I say this with all love towards you because yeah, I, yeah, I, I know yeah. you've left it all in the house. 100%. Um, the funny thing is that I never asked anybody to get involved or say anything. If people, if I initiated, I kind of initiated, I went head to head with Elena. I didn't need anybody to step up. I went head to head with Mark multiple times. I didn't need anybody to say That's anything. True. I That's went true. head to head with Justin Cody multiple occasions before that argument and nobody said anything. And even after that argument, I told people, don't get involved. I can hold my own and this is my battle. This is my fight. Now, I can't control when people are jumping in and out of arguments saying things to them. I don't think that's right. I don't think, I don't think it was right. And I can say that. I don't think it was right that the whole house went off on them. And that must have been really hard for them. But um, in the beginning of the game, I don't know if any, any of them have the face to say it. But in the beginning of the game, I was isolated. And there was a lot of personal yeah. things no, that we were saw being that. said about me. Yeah, that were yeah being we said saw about, that. Yeah. 
that didn't you, have to do you with dished the game. It out, but you also took it. Uh, I, with, yeah. Not like, uh, not like everybody. Uh, but I think that where people uh, got upset where this was happening on a repeated basis and not yeah. to lay this all at your feet was that it seems like that there was an agenda set in the house, often by Paul, of, okay, here's who's on the block this week. Okay, next week, this person is who's going out. And then everybody be mean to this person because we need to rattle them. And I, I think understand. it was when a person became ostracized. I think that that was something that was not fun to watch from a viewing perspective Completely because, understand. sure, I understand where it's coming from from a strategic point of view because you want to freeze that person out and not let them have any chance. But it is something that ends up being – the audience really sympathizes with that person that's left yeah. out. And I, I completely understand. I mean, my own family sympathize, sympathized with them. Um, they were like, why did you go at it with them so much? And, and they saw the live feeds also, so they understood the backstory, my my story behind it. I don't think right. that people I, – I don't think that some people um, had to do that to Justin Cody. I think that they didn't have a reason to do that. I did. Um they made it personal with me from, 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 they made it personal with me from when I kept Christmas, dude. I mm -hmm. did a game move on, everybody lies in Big Brother, buddy. You're a fan. You should know that I'm going to go upstairs and lie to you, and then I'm going to do the complete opposite. And I didn't owe you anything, Cody. I didn't give you my word. They made it personal with me, dude, week one. Calling me out of my name, um, saying horrible things. Oh, I'm a pussy. Right. Stop we, being a little girl. Yeah, stop, being, right. stop playing victim, you little pussy, and all this stuff. And I'm like, really, Cody? All right, God bless you, dude. I wish you the best. And then I said, my family's watching. I'm not going to be disrespected. I'm not going to stoop to his level, but I'm going to drive him nuts. Right. That was my end behind Josh, it. Josh, I have to tell you, you are amazing because uh, we have an, there's another life feeder. Her name is Melissa, and you would just drive her insane constantly. <laughs> you, have this, you, you have this ability to get into a fight with somebody, but you're acting like you're not fighting. I'm going to be you for a second, okay? So what, is you, what is you on the life feeds when you're like getting into a fight with Jessica? You're like, uh, well, why are you getting upset? Why are you getting upset? I'm not raising my voice to you. Why are, why are you raising your voice i didn't say anything like right now what are you doing why are yeah. you doing like i mean that is how you would yeah. be on life feeds and it would drive Cody everybody knows. crazy yeah. i yeah. mean like like you because like you're trying to apologize to me and cody's like josh i don't want to hear about it and you're yeah, like no, I, no, no, but I, I really want to apologize to you right <laughs> yeah yeah he hated see, that i at first i thought it wasn't i thought it was just you but in yes. hindsight, I I definitely think that there was some. I'm I'm buying the fact that there was some strategy mixed in with what you how you were deciding to play your game at that point. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that you know, be, I I wish that Jess would have stepped back away from Cody a little bit, man. I knew that, but at the same, in her defense, still, you know, she didn't have any other allies, and she, there was nobody else that she could trust. So I guess why right. I get why she did. But she would have had a way better shot if she would have stepped back away from Cody. Cody was aggressive, man. Um, Cody, the way that he stomped around the house, right. his attitude, his demeanor, the things he would say, we're we don't we're complete well, opposites. Even beyond and, that, I mean, like we yeah. you know, we saw the week that Cody was gone, Jessica was integrating into the house really well. I mean, I'm yeah. a Jessica fan, and even I said that Cody coming back into the house ruined her game. Not good for her game because yeah. then she became like there was it was so funny watching the live feeds because there was always one cam on like Paul and everybody, and then there yeah. was one cam on it was the jody cam there's always oh, one jody cam yeah. and you could have you could find it every night that cody and, and jessica were definitely in the house so uh uh and Taryn, unless you have any more questions about the hex week i wanted to fast forward to josh's hoh week well, on the topic of like the confrontations, we often saw you uh, sort of breaking down after you'd have a con a confrontation with someone. Yeah. Do you want to like explain what that was about? Yeah, I think that I never expected it to become so personal with me. I think that a lot of other people got into arguments, and yeah, they chimed in on arguments and said things, but I didn't think that it would. It was always personal with me. I would, I would try my best to make it game related. My intent was to place a target on people and have all eyes on them and expose their game and, you know, have people target them. But it instantly became personal. Um, you know, they said personal things to me. I would say personal things back. And that took a toll on me. Not only that, the aggressive, um, you know, they wanted to punch my face and throw things across my head and me wanting to defend myself, just the anger of not being able to do anything, uh, especially with Cody of anything, that would always take a toll on me. Um, so, 
as much as I, it was strategy to expose people's game and place a target on the back and all that, I think all game aside, with me and Cody, it just became so hostile, so personal, and so aggressive to where it wasn't healthy at one point for us to be even in that house. Like, I was like, dude, I can't do this anymore. I was drained of how every single time we saw each other, there was this tension where we knew it was going to happen. We knew it was going to go down. We knew we were going to argue. And then people would get involved. And, and, and I guess Paul controlled it or whatever. But it was just me and me and Cody were complete opposites. Okay. And I wish that it wouldn't have been so aggressive with both of us. Uh, one more question. Did you double tap? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, we did know double yes, tap. <laughs> I did double tap. But in my defense, Mark always double tapped. So I was like, yo, redo the shot. Redo the shot. Redo the game. But yeah, um, I think it was out of hand. And they didn't, you know, from my, I did see that clip. As soon as I stepped out, a producer showed me that clip. And it was funny as hell. But they didn't show how disrespected I felt by it. It wasn't game. No. It wasn't anything. I'm a man, dude. You don't. No, they showed it. They showed quite a bit of it. I have. I love that. You know, did you double tap? Has become the new like. Was it Han or Greedo that shot first? Like, <laughs> for real. Like, uh, I, yeah. Come on, give me a break. But I mean, it was. Yeah. It was very obvious you shot. You double tap. But oh, yeah. it was obvious that Mark went totally batshit crazy when that yeah. happened for no apparent yeah. reason it was yeah. like uh, Dude, we always call him the incredible sulk but at that moment he really was the incredible hole yeah yeah <laughs> and and the funny thing is that you know i think the house i was kind of the joke of the house i was the ah josh is a joke he's not gonna win anything this guy's a goofball this guy's weird this guy sucks this so i was goofy but i played into that a lot i played the goofy guy i i, I downplayed um the type of person that i am dude i'm very i'm very did assertive you, did you yeah. play the victim though that's what i want to know like did I, you I, consciously decide you know what i'm gonna play the victim here no? i wish that i could have played i never played the victim i okay. wish that i could have played the victim or did that the i did what i did do was i let a lot of people think whatever they wanted of me and i didn't give a shit i was like think whatever you want believe whatever you want i don't have to defend it because at the end of the day this is a game and whatever you think of me it's going to benefit me. So if you think I'm goofy, I'm a loser, and I'm all this, then so be it. Mark had this ego and this thing of, like, he was the biggest man on campus from early on, dude. Especially when he aligned with Cody and Matt from the beginning, he had that aura of just, like, he thought he was untouchable. He thought he was safe. He right. thought he was this guy. And that's going to be irritating that, to you. Exactly. I dealt with Mark my whole life in sports and everything. So I was like, dude. If you want to act like that, you don't know how I am. So you want to throw a drink in my face. All right, I'm going to hit you where it hurts. Let's make it game related because I know that's going to affect you in this house. And I know it's going to throw you off. And that's exactly what I did. Instead of it making it a fight, and I decided to say, all right, I'm going to expose this game. Call him out for something that the whole house already knows that everybody knew already. I didn't have to say anything, but I just wanted to continue to drill it in people's minds that Mark can be trusted. And yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so you become... HOH the following yeah. week after the hex is used. And Paul has already set the agenda going into this week that as long as Cody and Jessica don't win HOH, they're going to be the targets because Cody is or because Paul is really threatened by them. But you are entertaining other ideas as well as Christmas. So this this was the first real uh, inkling of maybe Josh and Christmas are woke. Maybe they realize what Paul's doing here. Uh, and maybe they're going to actually take a shot at somebody other than Jessica and Cody. Yeah. So, but you were saying that to us in the diary room, but it didn't always match up with what you're doing in the house. So what were your okay. real feelings when you won HOH and who you really wanted out? Okay, perfect. Great question. So obviously we know that on week, uh, Jessica's HOH, she took a shot at me. She made it personal. I didn't deserve to be here, all this stuff. But I knew that Jess and Cody were huge house targets. I knew that they were always going to continue to be targets as long as they were in the house. So I was thinking I can put up Elena and Mark that also targeted, took a shot at me and voted to evict me. But I knew, listen, I was onto Elena's game from BB Weather when she memorized <laughs> the whole thing and she was teaching the whole house, the whole, um, all the lines. She was literally teaching everybody, all right, this is how you do it. Th so I was like, whoa, this girl's a freaking, she's a memory bank. Like, she's a threat. Not only that, when she won that walk, when not won, when she was top three in that walk, walk right. comp, Alex's week, dude, I was like, and she cut that deal with Jason, and Jason jumped off like that. I was like, this girl's a threat. I'm like, I don't care. She needs to go. And her social game was sick. 
So I knew that I wanted to place a target on Elena or I wanted to take a shot at Elena. But I also had, they can make it seem spin it and do whatever they want to where, oh, Jess and Cody were Paul's targets. But Jess and Cody also targeted me. Jess and Cody also made the game personal for me and it was That's extremely true. hard to live with them. So it wasn't like it was Raven and Raven was HOH and Paul went to Raven and told Raven, all right, we're targeting Jess and Cody. No, Jess was one of my targets and so was Cody, but so was Elena. So it was a win-win for me. I had targets spread out on the, on the, on the block and I just had to work it to where it benefited my game. At that point, I did want Elena to go. Elena really was my target because before, wait, before the whole blow up with me and Jess, the whole, um, the whole evicted, the whole spelling comp, I wanted Elena to go because Elena was getting extremely close to Paul. And I saw that and I was like, okay, this is not good. Um, okay. If Paul gets close to Elena, I see them going to final two before me. Right. I see him moving forward with Elena before me. So I said, all right, I need to separate that or Paul needs to see. I need to start planting seeds in Paul's mind where he starts looking at Elena differently. And I did that my HOH week where I pulled him up and she couldn't get out of her own way because she was throwing his name everywhere. That was my intent there, to put a target on Elena, but also have Paul realize that Elena can be trusted. Um, and I you, wanted so Elena, I didn't, you, 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 you didn't want Mark and Elena getting back in the group more than anything, no, because at that point yeah. they were out of the group and you felt yeah. like threatened that they might find a way to weasel their way back exactly. in and, and, and Paul they were. Tr trade out you and Christmas for Elena and Mark if Elena is in with Paul. So you wanted yeah. Paul to see how badly Elena, well, didn't really have his best interest at heart. Yes, there we okay. go. Perfectly yeah. said. That's right, what, yeah. That was my intent. All Let right. me ask you this this question because this is a this is a pet theory that I've had uh, during this season. That this yeah. was the only week that Christmas ever entertained doing something Paul didn't want to happen. This was the only time in yeah. 92 days that she even considered doing something that Paul would have disapproved of. Do you think yeah. that Christmas was getting jealous of the attention that Paul was giving to Elena? <laughs> I didn't even know there was feelings there. I didn't know until I stepped outside the house and I got told in an interview. So I didn't right. know there was feelings there. Um, I don't think it was that. I think that she, uh, if anybody knew my game and knew how well I knew the game was Christmas and she knew that I, dude, I'm, I'm a decision maker. I call, I, I call the shots. But Paul liked the control and it was driving me nuts. And she knew that from multiple conversations we were having. So I think she was looking out for me and she's like, listen, do what you want. And at the end of the day, I was gonna do I was gonna do what benefited my game, but I had Paul think that you know I, I wanted Paul to feel comfortable and okay, yeah, Paul, we're gonna do whatever you want. Where it went left for me, I honestly was going to target Elena and get Je Jason and Alex on board. I knew Kevin was going to keep Jessica if I told him. If I said that house, this is what I'm gonna do. I want Elena gone. This is my HOH, respect it. I'm pretty sure a lot of people would have done it. But yeah. where Jess, when Jess messed up is when she didn't give me an opportunity to talk to the damn girl. I tried. I tried. I'm like, yeah, Jess, we saw. when yeah. you're ready, let's have a conversation, Jess. Jess, let's talk so that I can hint at her. Jess, you're not my target. I wanted to have that conversation with her. Dude, Cody did not let this girl. She did not leave Cody's side. Cody did not let this girl talk for herself. She did not let Jess play her game. He ruined Jessica's game because she would have had a chance that week and they would have made it to jury. But thank God she didn't because she would have voted for Paul and I wouldn't be 500K richer. Right. Hey, 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 right. I always hey, look hey, back at that. And I Paul had that. a point. And Paul had a point. He said, if they go to jury, they're going to vote together and they're going to be two votes. And they would have been but against me. So um, he did make that point. And that's when I was thinking, okay, I think Jess has to go. <laughs> but when Jess mate got extremely childish and was in her feelings and wanted to start talking out of her ass and start saying crazy things. That's when I said, all right, girl, no, I'm not going to leave you in this house. I'm not going to go out of my way and extend an olive branch when you're calling me out of my name and disrespecting me on national television. So your ass has to go. She, right. She did it to herself. Right. Which not only was, sorry, but I'm, I'm, I'm like feeling it right now. Not yeah, only that's was okay. her we veto like it. move. We like it. Yeah. yeah. Not only was her veto move the stupidest move of the season, but also her not allowing herself to be social and move past 
whatever we had in order to further her game was a dumb no i I, josh i'm a huge fan of jessica and i was very critical of her for just uh, closing off all lines of communication with everybody in the house and you know basically just staying in cody's lap the entire time i felt like there was a play for her there you know sometimes you just have to look at your worst enemy in the house and go what you know what i'll work with you just for today but i'll work for you and it, it, it seemed like she wouldn't get past I mean, and, and maybe she had her reasons, but she couldn't get past her own and I, there. And I understand people were lying to you. I understand people weren't to be trusted, but you're playing big brother. This game changes every single hour. For you to think that you're going to win every single competition and make it to the end, you both played yourself because that's not big brother. You had to have numbers and you need to have people. Sometimes I would get into fight with people, but I knew that I had to do damage control as soon as the fights were over. I knew that I had to rebond myself, explain why I did what I did. But at the same sense, when I made up with Elena, made up with Mark, I already knew that those seeds were planted in people's heads and they already had a target on their back. So I placed a target, had arguments in front of the whole house and called them out on their gameplay and then made up with them and kind of settled the waters. But people were already thinking and they already knew there was already target a target on Elena, a target on Mark. So even though yeah. I fixed everything with them, that wasn't for the house. The house was already looking at them some type of way. Right. You know, so but how, I always went and 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 repaired my relationships. How did you feel? That's what I think she should have done. Sorry, how, how did you feel Sorry. about the uh, about Christmas using the temptation to block Cody because she was looking for you to give her a sign. Yeah, did you really blink, Josh? No, guys, seriously. No, guys, think about I, this before you answer because, like, on the show, you kind of made it seem like, yeah, you did, but then it didn't seem like you really did. So did you really blink or not? Guys, before we went into that, I told Paul and Christmas, if Cody is drawn, use a ring. Because okay. at that point, right. I said, at that point, I said, okay. the because only you way- it. Yes. The, I said, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, no, I mean, we we saw like right up until like maybe ten minutes before the veto ceremony. So it would have you would have had to tell them that in that ten minutes where you said, "Okay, go ahead and use the ring." But we were all like, like I was like, "There's no way they're going to use the ring because Josh said he doesn't want the ring used. Christmas doesn't want to use it." But then you know, and Paul wanted it used, and then we come back from the veto ceremony, and the ring was used. We're like, "Oh my God, Paul's controlling the both of them." This but you're saying sucks, that that's not <laughs> this I can I can hear it in your voice that you're ear. I mean, and I and rightfully so, you're you're irritated by some of the perceptions of the fan tab of Paul being the yeah. mastermind over the yeah, entire yeah. house and you were just one of his minions. So yeah, it's a, yeah. I mean, yeah, go ahead. Kudos to him. I mean, he got that edit good for him, dude. But um, <laughs> I think that I think that there's a lot of things. Now I want to watch back. There's a lot of things that aren't being shown. I told Christmas and Paul, if Cody is drawn and they could vow for it if they want, if they don't, don't want okay. to, then that's fine. I told them, if Cody is drawn, then use the ring. Because at that point, then I'm going against Christmas and Paul, where, which were my closest allies. Right. But not only that, um, you know, he would be able to pull. Je- I wanted Jess to pull herself off. I didn't want it to be where Cody, th- that, then that was out of my hand. If Cody okay. was drawn, I had no choice but to use the ring, replace, uh, replace Cody, and then I'm good. And then it doesn't look, it would have looked like I'm working with them or something like that, and it would have messed up my game. Okay. Jess had to save herself. That was the only way that she was going to stay. But once Cody got drawn, Cody was actually the first name that I drew. And I looked at Christmas. Yeah, I looked at Christmas and I said, do your thing. Okay. So, yeah, cool. I told her. I told both of them. All right. Said, so- My turn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I really feel like your your game took off, Josh, after you got through the first double eviction. Because, you know, there was the week after Jessica was evicted on your HOH. Cody goes home, pretty non-eventful. Uh, and then the double eviction happens, and Mark and Elena are on the block. Mark ultimately wins the veto. Elena goes home, and then the next week, isn't that the Christmas week where she wins? Yes, it is. Yeah. Uh, somehow, a girl with a broken leg wins a running competition. Yeah. So were you just, as a fan, were you just laughing the entire time thinking this is incredible or were you like, this is embarrassing, I can't believe I'm a part of this? <laughs> I was shocked that these people were literally doing this. I was like, holy shit, you guys are literally throwing this to us, throwing it to Paul, and then Paul's throwing it to us. But that's when I knew that Paul was literally no blood on his hands. He wanted people to take shots. I knew that, and I would voice that to Christmas, and I was getting shut down but i knew oh, that yeah we and, saw that yeah like, and i saw seriously it. 
our yeah. our irritation with Christmas only grew from this point on because every time you wanted to have a conversation about, I got doubts about Paul. I think he might be like having deals with everybody. She would just not listen to you, and it was like, I mean, it it, it makes sense in hindsight because. Apparently she has feelings for him, so maybe that was clouding her judgment. But at the time, we were like, how can you not listen to Josh, who is your ride or die? And I know you had to be thinking the same thing. I was frustrated, guys. I'm, I'm To be completely honest with you, I was so frustrated because um, she saw it. And, and I don't think it had to do with feelings. I think that as a, the person that Christmas is, she's extremely loyal as well. And she did not see it, and she did not think it. But I knew as a fan, man, I was seeing everything. I was seeing all these moves, the way that he was literally grouped up one minute with Jason and Alex and grouped up with Madam Raven. And it was like, everybody's, you know, we're all doing this stuff, but Paul's not getting any blood on his hands. So kudos, props to him. You get me? That was awesome. But when I couldn't go against it was when I, I said, okay, I'm going to essentially turn on Christmas also if I turn on Paul. Okay. And I don't know. I'm not going to break. I'm not going to come in between Jason and Alex. That's not going to happen. They're not going to take me to final two and final three. Matt and Raven, they're not gonna they're not gonna go with me to final two and final three. So that's when I had to think, what's best for my game? Do I turn or do I stick by them and let it play out? And I had to stick by it and let it play out because if not, I would have been targeted and I don't see myself where I would have fit in with those other two alliances. Um, so I had to, you know, take a step back and and right. have her see it for herself. Um, well, the point but, when, when, I mean, and I do, I agree with you there that you had to, you had to go, let that go through. You had to let Jason be evicted. But the week that Jason was evicted was the first time that you really started to have doubts about Paul, about his position in the game as far as, you know, is, it. right. Is he, is he a Derek? Is he a Vanessa? Like, I need to be worried about him. And I know you were really, really irritated with Paul that he would not let you go to Jason and say, you know, there was that scene of you guys in the hot tub where you're breaking down yeah. and you want to tell Jason so bad, oh my God, I'm about to betray you. But Paul has stayed your hand and said, you know, no, you cannot tell him under any circumstances. Yeah. So you had this genius idea, which I think is actually underutilized, uh, to use the goodbye messages as a way to shape your game. Can you talk about yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. So I knew that I had to, people didn't see my game. I don't even think the fans saw my game because it was all overlooked by all of Paul's thing. But I had to find these guys the, didn't miss anything. Yeah, I didn't yeah, miss yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah, I love these two. I love you guys. So it's awesome. And I love live features because they literally see everything. Um, so I had to find a way to let Jason know and let the other housemates know that I was thinking, I think one thing that they respected was that I had balls and I didn't care and I said it how it was, but also how loyal I was. And I preached that the whole season. So I had to show Jason and show these people that I was playing this game and doing this because I decided to stay loyal by Paul and Christmas. And in a sense, expose what we had. Because yeah. I knew that Paul was working his angles and he was making it seem like he wasn't working with us. It, and, and I picked up on that through conversations with Jason. I picked up on that through conversations with Alex that he was making it seem like it was, man, Jason was so loose with the lips. He would be like, oh, I mean, he told me. I was going to flip that boat. I don't know if they showed that either. I was going, I was on the fence about Jason and Kevin. And I said, I went to Jason and had a conversation with him. And I don't think it was shown because um, we, were, we were getting ready for a live show. And I go, Jason, what, where are me and you moving forward? Because I have no one. And he goes, I'm moving forward with Alex because she's my number one. I'm not going to turn on her now. And I don't think I could beat you in the end. I think that I can beat Paul because he's a bet. When I had that conversation with him in the parlor, that's when I said, Jason has to go because he's not going to take me to final two or final three. And I'm not going to continue to move forward with him because he's locked in with Paul and Alex. So I was really on the fence and I was torn. I was going to make an emotional move that week because I was leaning so much towards Jason. And I thought that we could have really, we could have done some damage. And if I would have exposed how I had in, the, in my mind that I wanted to expose Paul's game and I could have done it. I thought, okay, I'm going to lean with Paul. I'll, I'll, I'll go towards Jason and Alex and Christmas. Right. But when, Paul, when, when I saw how blinded Jason was in Alex and I wasn't going to be able to persuade them or do anything to convince them of that, and I knew how good Paul was, I knew that there was no way of breaking that up. And he told me what I had to hear, basically. Right. That I wasn't going to move forward with him, that I wasn't his number one or his number two. So that's why I decided to 
give him a boot. Well, there was this great scene of you and Paul in the hammock. Uh, I think it took place actually a week or two later where you were talking about the goodbye messages and you're both just lying through your teeth to each other. Like, oh, I mean, yeah. you know, you're like, Paul's like asking you, so what are you saying in your goodbye message? You're like, yeah. oh, you know, I'm just, I'm still snowing them, telling them nothing, you know, yeah. of course that's not true. And Paul, yeah. on the other hand, is telling him, telling you that he's telling them the truth, which is not true. He's not, he's totally snowing them the entire yep, time. Yep, yep, uh, I knew it. was it. a great contrast in the injury management it was funny because and, and that's another thing it was funny because he would always talk about people don't need to know that me you and christmas are working together until they watch back the show i go smart guy i'm like ah you're smart dude because you're removing yourself and it's me and christmas right and and that's funny another thing that i never said anywhere was season 16 i saw how Derek was working people walking into jury as they were leaving how he tried to work Victoria into like making it seem like they were distant so that they thought that they didn't, that she didn't have, that he didn't have her vote. I saw the dream management that he was doing as people were walking. I had to do a different approach because I couldn't show my cards in the house because then Paul would target me. And I couldn't air him out because those people were not going to believe me. Essentially, they would, I didn't have that control. So I knew that I had to go into diary rooms and expose my game, expose their game. And, and say and explain why is it the moves that I was making. Okay. So that was the route that I took, and that was strategy. And and for people to say that it was cowardly, um, you obviously had it wasn't well, Only Paul seasons. said it was cowardly. Yeah. Nobody yeah. else said it was. I mean, people say that I, yeah. that, as a fan, I know the game of Big Brother, and I know that you can work it from every single angle. And for you to think that goodbye messages does not play a big role into jury management, you played yourself. Like, well, it yeah, does. I mean, that's why like we we talk about Paul saying like oh don't watch your season back like if he had watched his season back maybe he would have realized that Look, you can't lie to people in That's not fair. Message. That he got to watch so many seasons of the show. I had another disadvantage <laughs> that nobody was going to vote for me because I was a vet and then I didn't get to see all of the seasons that he got to. Very gumpy. <laughs> I'll tell you, I love the kid, dude. We're really good friends, and we're going to continue to be good friends. Uh, Big Brother is a game. It's kind of like business where I can separate business. That's and right. right. I love the kid. Okay. And he is one of – the friendship that we formed in that house was genuine, and we had each other's back a lot. Um, That he was playing his game, and he was looking out for Paul, dude. And I would go in the DR and be like, man, Paul's just looking out for himself. Like, Paul's just looking out for Paul. But, you know, I'm going to stick by him until he turns on me. And I would say that in the DR. I don't know if they ever showed that. I doubt it, but I would always say that. And, and, you know, he never was, he never threatened my game. And when he did, I was, I'm telling you, I would have taken the shot, but I didn't have the opportunity to do it. How, how aware were you of Paul's end game plans? Because for a while he was planning on going to the end with Alex and Jason. And at one point he changed his mind. How, how on top of that were you? Um, I knew that, so I didn't know that he was actually going to go with them to the end, but I knew that he was, he was, and I said this in the house. I'm pretty sure you saw it. I said, he's literally working it to where he, he's not being looked at. He's safe and he's, he, he's protecting all corners and making sure if they win, well, they take a shot at them. If Raven wins, they'll take a shot at us. So right. it was always Paul and the two. I knew that. I knew that for sure. And I knew that it wasn't, oh, he wanted to take us over them. I knew that he was doing it where like, oh, well, however it played out, I was going to be protected. I was going to be safe. And I was going to make it a final three. And I respect it. And I think that Christmas thought that he was, it was us, you know, it was us and it was us three and it's us three against them. And he has to work that angle. I knew that he was working that angle just in case something went left. We would, and I would be essentially the number that was going to be, nobody was going to take Christmas out over me. So I knew that I was going to be the shot, the shot was going to be taken at me, but he was working it to where, However it played out, it was going to be to his benefit. I it seemed that. like you had to make a calculated call. I mean, on, on one hand, you Every wanted time. to, uh, you know, you, you didn't want Paul to be covered everywhere and you to feel the one who's who's getting all the heat. On the other hand, to do something to upset that balance might have ultimately upset your entire place in the game. So it was sort of like a calculated risk where you're like, I know that Paul's I doing this. I know that I'm probably going to get the heat if something goes wrong. But my larger place in the game is secure as long as the worst case scenario doesn't happen and I'm willing to take that risk. That's how it feels to me. Um, the, and also, I was thinking in my mind, I was like, okay, so this is going to happen. This is what Paul wants to go down. The house is not going to go against him. How do I work this to the best of my advantage? So I said, 
go down the honest and truthful route. I'm going to go after Alex, but if I'm going to nominate her, I'm not going to blindside her because he wanted her to be blindsided. And I said, I'm going to nominate her and tell her the truth. She is my target. She's a great competitor. And this is the only shot that I'm going to have. I decided to go straight forward. And that way, I knew that people would respect my game move and my game decision. Um, instead of blindsiding them and acting like I was their friends and all this stuff and be like, oh, yeah, Kevin's the target. I decided to be straightforward with her. I decided to be straightforward with Cody before he left and told them that Jess was not my target, that Elena was. Right. And I, re- and, and I kind of, not repaired, but I kind of, that was like an olive branch. I repaired my relationship with Mark before he left. Well, I think I there told- was like... I think there was some grudging respect that was given yeah, to you. Yeah, exactly. You know, like, I mean, like, they were like, at least you were, I know Cody said, you know, the reason he ultimately voted for you was because you at least kept it real. He didn't really yeah. like either one of you, but you were real. Alex said when she uh, stuck her key in the box that she's going to vote for the person who stabbed her in the front rather than the back. So it seemed like you're, if, if that was your plan, then that it was, was working. That was my plan. I said, I'm going to be, I mean, they, they've known me for so long. I'm not going to change it up now. And I'm not going to play it to where I'm going to blindside them and do that because that's going to look bad, bad on me. And if I'm going to take a shot, I have no option but to take the shot. But I'd rather be straightforward about it and be honest and, and have it be respected as a game move than a blindside on Alex where I did consider her a friend. Right. Uh, so, so, Josh, th- this is my biggest question of the night. This is the question that I I, I feel like I know the answer to this question, yeah. but I want to hear it from you. Um, so we're at about the final five, I think, and you decide to have a, cr- a conversation with Christmas, and you're going to tell her, look, I want to take you to the final two. And this whole time, I think you just assumed that you were going to go to the final two with Christmas, that she was going to yep. take you, you yep. were going to take her, and... I, I want to, it's sort of a two part question. Number one, how did you feel when you were having this conversation with her and she is saying to you, not it's only can I not promise to take you, Josh, to the final two, but if fun. you win the final HOH, you should take Paul to the end. I, how are you feeling as a, as a, friend of hers and a final two ride or die and how are you feeling as a fan? Like, can, can you believe this chick is actually telling me to take, to not take her to the end? Yeah. Um, funny thing is, as soon as I heard those words, instantly I go, she's not taking me to final two. That's insta- That's the, the exact thought that went through my mind. I said, she's not right. taking me to final two. She's and taking she Paul. would not have. I know. She's yes. taking Paul. She's okay. not taking me. So she, the, in her sense, she's, um, she's protecting her. She protected herself with those comments. She didn't promise me anything. And, you know, she, she was straightforward about it. So I said... She didn't tell me she wasn't going to take me, but that was her way of telling me. Yeah, I know she, that was her way of was, telling you. That exactly. was her way of telling yes, me. Yes. Going to me, I clicked. She's not taking me to And me that's yet. why, you know, I give you credit because you're a fan of the show and you yeah. know that when people say things like that, they're basically yes. telling you without telling you. Somebody else who's yes. not a fan of the show well, would not well, have necessarily picked up on that. I didn't need somebody to do an action twice or I didn't need somebody to repeat themselves twice for me. You said something one time and I went with that. If you said, hey, I'm targeting you, boom. I went with that. I didn't question it. Okay. I didn't go ask somebody else. So I the, always went, yeah. So this is my question to you, okay? And I, I'm sure to try, trying to be as honest about it as possible because yeah. I feel like if Christmas says to you, yes, Josh, we're going to the final two. I'm taking you to the final two. I feel like you do take her to the final two. Yep. I really do. I feel yep. like that part of the reason that On you my- did not take her to the final two and took Paul to the end was because you just – Liked you well, maybe not liked. You you felt more loyalty with him that 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 was truer, and you were your your feelings were hurt when Christmas said yeah. what she said to you. Uh, that's very true. I think that 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 played a huge role into that. Not only that, before when we were getting ready for live shows, I Paul me Paul didn't see it. I pointed this out to him. Um, Alex, and if you guys have Alex, ask her this question. She walks up to Christmas before she walks out. She gives her a rose that her mom sent her from Hawaii. And it was like, an, for me, it was an olive branch of like, everything settled. I, for me, it was like, okay, this girl, they're repairing their friendship. And I saw Alex and Christmas talking a lot. So I thought, okay, and she was, she didn't want me to talk to Alex the whole week that she was, she's like, don't go talk to her. Don't, why are you talking to her? She was panicking. So I was like, okay, so she's repairing her relationship with Alex. Before Kevin walks out, he shakes her hand. He goes, I wish you the best. And I hope that you make it till the end. When I saw those two actions, and, and, and then thinking back to what Christmas told me, I said, she's been working her angle with the people that are going to jury. And, you know, these people don't have anything against her because she didn't really piss anybody off. 
But not only that, she's not going to take me to the end. Right. So that was the deciding factor for me where I said, okay, I'm not taking Christmas. And wow. I would stand at like 2 in the morning right. at the memory wall, and I was driving myself nuts just looking at it, and I was like, okay, who would Christmas have over me? Who well, hates me in Jersey? Even if he, even here's the thing. I think that even if you thought you would have lost to Christmas, even if you saw like the Rose and Kevin talking to her, even if all that stuff happens, I still think that you take her to the end if she doesn't have that conversation with you. If she says, have. you know what, Josh, I'm in it with you. I've been in, in it with you since the beginning. So, I, I mean, I just, I guess I just want you to say, like, how bad of a move was that on her part? I, I, I did tell her that, and I told yeah. her that. And I even told her if Paul, early before we even got to final two, if Paul starts talking final two with me, just tell him I'm going to tell him everything he wants to hear. But you're my final two. I told her that. Okay. Um, I don't know if she remembers it, but I did tell her that. I was like, just know you're my final two. You're my ride or die. I'm going with right. you. Those two, those two, it was those three things. That conversation, those two actions that I saw was very split. And in that house, dude, any, everything counts. If I see you in that room talking to somebody that I don't trust and you're having a full-blown conversation with them, I don't even know what you're saying. I'm instantly going to go off based on that. So when I saw those actions with Alex and, and Kevin, and then that, she gave me that. Okay. That was my deciding factor, yeah. I, don't you feel like that's really like the smoking gun that she would never turn against Paul, that she was so <laughs> she was so gung-ho about Paul at every turn? I don't even know where. I, I, I was blindsided by that. I don't even know where that came from. I was, I was shocked, dude. But, I mean, well, you guys, it's 92 days, and we right. – all three of us build such a strong friendship and bond. Um, people can say what they want about Paul, but I knew, I know that out of a lot of people in that house, I know that he gravitated towards us two a lot. He did build genuine friendships with other people, but we just we would sit down and talk about nonsense and just connect, and we could just sit there and not talk at all. And we were if we felt we built good friendships. So I think that she was. I think that from a friendship perspective, she was she protected us and she cared for us so much, both of us. She did. That, that you know it was it was tearing at her heart a bit so yeah so uh what votes did you think you had against uh paul going into the because you just ultimately oh, decided yeah. to take paul because you think you can beat him uh yeah. and you were looking at the votes what how did you think that was gonna go you guys are gonna laugh i <laughs> know uh, no, we laugh. know josh well, i i already know the answer to this question so go ahead so go ahead and tell I, them the votes you thought you had i thought that i had christmas mm -hmm. jason alex mm -hmm. matt and raven yes <laughs> Those are the votes that I – and then I said, oh, Kevin, why? Because I, Kevin was one of the people that always saw my game. He's like, dude, you're adapting. You're doing so good at this game. You reinserted yourself. You're adapting. That's why I thought Kevin was such a huge you're fan. pretty good. Because, pretty good. <laughs> yeah, he's like, only a fan. Yeah, I'm like, only a fan can see this. Only a fan can see how, uh, how quick I bounce back. And, and so I'm like, okay, Kevin's going to give me the vote because he's kind of seen the game that I played. But I, I knew that him and Paul were locked in. But, damn, I didn't think that he was going to – I was surprised by that. Well, I was surprised by Cody voting for me. Mark, Mark and Elena. Yeah. Dude, the whole vote, the, all the votes, how they played, I was just like, what? Yeah, it was totally – we were laughing because we knew you were going to take Paul to the end. A lot of the people who don't really watch the feeds were shocked yeah. when you won the final HOH competition. Number one, that you won, which I knew you could win. Number yeah. two, that you ultimately decided to not – pull a Steve Moses and cut yeah. the head off the snake. You decided to take the snake with yeah. you to the final yeah. two because you thought that you would have a better chance at him. But the votes that you were talking about getting, like, well, I know I have Raven and Matt yeah. because they don't, they don't <laughs> want to see a vet win. And I know I have Jason. And we're like, girl, that ain't happening. Like, uh, Matt yeah. and Raven are not voting for you. Uh, yeah. Dude, Matt and Raven would constantly preach about how, oh, he's a vet. It's a disadvantage. You know, a bet can't win again. <laughs> Things like that. I'm like, dude, what the hell? Right. Like, yeah, I, was, I was shocked by it. It was but funny they, because they were closer. Because like like one of your worries um, in the I think the week that you took out Alex uh, potentially uh, was that uh, or no it was the one you took out Jason was that uh, Paul was gonna like pull in Alex instead of Raven because you thought you had Raven but we as sitting at home watching the feeds were like this is. Paul's biggest mistake is not keeping Raven because Raven yeah. was so, so loyal. Blindly loyal. 
and, yes, and yes. like I think that Raven was the person he could have beat in the end. Um, yes. And so, like uh, in many ways, I think that uh, that taking uh, Raven out Baron, and- I spoke to Raven at oh, the yeah, finale, sorry. and she oh, said God. that <laughs> she would have beaten Paul in the final two. That would have been a huge Rob, mistake. you are you are the funniest <laughs> man. I had a fan send me the clip of the Kool Aid, and I was dying, dude. Why? <laughs> Why do you have to do that? <laughs> <laughs> oh god that was epic but Josh, yeah, it yeah. Was, did paul make cherry kool-aid in the house never <laughs> ever he made the best friendship prize he She's made just the making best things up. yeah <laughs> no she, and, and he did and i love uh we love raven yeah we love yes. Raven. My heart, she, we, i texted her earlier she's yes. a good girl raven and she's is young she's young butty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> butty, butty. Guys, butty, butty. <laughs> guys she's young and i got love for her and that, that was just funny but yeah I, right she's been through a lot yeah, yeah. she's yeah. exactly so josh uh it's finale night you heard the questions you think there's uh, before they reveal the votes did you think you had a chance um, before they revealed it, yes. I, I, I knew that people Honest. were going to be bitter. To- I okay. knew that people were going to be bitter towards him, and okay. I knew that, and I knew the angle that I was working, and I knew that if I knew once I answered my questions, dude, I had that prepared probably. Your questions too. were great. I you, knew the, the line about your dad and the uh, uh, you letting people think that they have control yeah. over you. I, that was I think my the jury ate that up. Yeah. That was yeah. my strategy and exposing that I was a fan, exposing that, that I wanted people to have control over me and all that stuff. I knew that I was going to work that angle. But once he went, I didn't, as soon as I drew him, I'm like, I made a big mistake. I'm like, I made a mistake. I'm bringing Paul. I made a mistake. He's going to beat me. As soon as that first question dropped about the whole, that Elena the asked bullying, him the question yeah. and he went like that. Yeah. And she completely hit. She completely threw him off. We went into commercial break and he panicked. Oh, he was pissed. He panicked. That's when I said, this is my chance to fucking crush these, to crush it. Right. This is my right. chance to go and, and, and just own everything. Just own it. You get me? Um, yeah. He was thrown off. He was completely thrown off with that first question. And then he got in this mood where it was like uh, defense. It was a defense. It was a defense thing. So I was like, screw it. I'm just going to answer the questions the best that I can. And I knew that some people were bitter, but I didn't think those votes were going to play out like that. No. Okay. So, so you lose Christmas's vote. You lose Kevin's vote. I, you're yeah. like, I lost. Yeah. I lost. I lost. Right. I lost. I lost. I thought I, I lost. I, I, seriously, I know this because it's four to two. I've watched this like a, maybe like 75 times. I've watched it. <laughs> um, it's four to two. And honestly, they're getting, she's getting ready to read Mark's vote. She said, Mark's vote goes to, you look at this. The only time where you looked over at Paul and you were like smiling at him like, Okay, you, you got it. You yeah. got it. Yeah, exactly. And I would have been happy, dude. I would have been happy. I know I you would have been you happy. You worked That's your what... ass off. I would have been happy. Yes. Uh, we I'm were like, like if... fifty thousand dollars. I talked to uh, Arissa Cox, who hosts uh, Big Brother Canada, and we were talking about this. We could see that yeah. you would have been happy with fifty thousand dollars. You were just so happy to be there. And honestly, that's, that's why cool. I was so excited when you ultimately did win because yeah. I knew that it meant a lot to you. It, it um even when I stopped and I and I comp- I was in man my nerves were bad. You forgot but, Orwell. Oh, I forgot Orwell. I forgot my speech. I forgot everything. But I was in shock and I I'm like, dude, this is happening. Like I dreamt about this moment. I saw Steve's moment. I saw season six. I I watched these people in final two and I'm like, even when I was on the balancing, I was like, dude, this is happening. Like my dream is happening. I was in complete shock. And I was just completely grateful. And, and, and that's what the, that was the shock that I had. So then when I heard my name, I was like, what is going on? So I, even if I would have won or lost, even if I would have lost, I was going to be happy for the kid because he worked hard. He worked his ass off all season. But I, I was happy that I made it to that final tune, that I was living a dream, dude, because I envisioned okay. that. So yeah. let me ask you this question then. And I try. I, I, I'm going to preface this by saying a couple things. So uh, Mark and Elena and Jason, in their interviews after the show, they said that Paul played the better game. They they just said they and they, but they didn't vote for him. Yeah. Okay. So my question to you is this: Do you think that it's more true that you won the game, or do you think it's more true that Paul lost the game? Okay. Great question. Big brother is big brother. The game doesn't stop until you walk out of that door. If okay. there was a bitter jury, you made that jury bitter, buddy. That's what I want to so hear. Guess what? So guess what? That's my advantage. Okay. This is where I win. This is where my my DRs 
work to my advantage. This is where my speech worked to my advantage. This is where I played a loyal, straightforward, honest game, and I didn't give a shit. I wore my heart and my balls on my sleeve, and people liked that. Okay. A lot of people played scared and played it safe on season 19. Yes, and I think a lot did. of people would have wished that they would have stood up. And even though they won't say it, they would have wished that they didn't stand behind someone and they would have voiced their opinion like I did. And I think that me walking out and, and Cody said something. He said that he respected that I wasn't hiding behind the, the, the curtain and I was up front and center in everybody's face. That he respected that and a lot of viewers respected that. I walk away happy. The game doesn't stop as a fan. I know the game doesn't stop until you walk out. You could be the biggest competitor. You could be the, the most hated, but just know that you got to work every single angle. And if you didn't do jury management, then you failed at one big aspect of the game. Okay. I that's, it. that's a I great answer, it. Josh. But if we're talking game, the, that's the game. I won because I won Big Brother because I worked every single angle and I made sure that I did jury management. And that's why I won Big Brother. Do you and think that people, if, yeah. it's, sorry? Do you think that if Paul had owned his game that he would have beaten you? Hands down. He would have beaten me. He would have beaten me. He would have said, guys, I had to do it. He would have pulled in Andy from season 15. Andy was hated. Andy was the snake. But Andy stood there and he and he owned it. And I think that if he would have done that, I think that I would have lost no, him. That's down. a great Josh because we had Andy on the show and oh, was it finale night, Taryn? Or no, it wasn't finale. Yeah, it was right before. Thursday yeah. before. Yeah, exactly. And he was talking about this. Like, you know, how when he because we knew that Paul was lying in his goodbye messages and Andy was just like gassed, like, why is he doing this? Yeah. And he thought for sure he was going to get caught at the end. And he was like, you know, when I was on the show and, you know, pe people were mad at me for the moves that I did. Yes, I did betray you, but this is why I had to do it because you were so great, you know. Yeah. And he, he owned it that way. And Paul just didn't seem to have an ability to do that, and you did. Yeah, I could have. I mean, they, I don't know if they showed how. I locked in with Jason and Alex day one, week one. I locked in with them. And to my advantage, people could say, oh, Paul controlled everything. I went to Jason and Alex and I told them, did you guys, they wanted to take a shot at Paul week three. And I said, did you? And Cody had them fooled, dude. Cody, not fooled, but Cody had Jason and Alex. And I was the one that said, guys, did you guys watch Paul? Because he's extremely loyal. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, he's friendly and social with everybody. But right. Paul is loyal. To find loyalty in this house, that's huge. I right. opened that relationship. Up. That was the point when uh, Jason was voicing a lot of doubts about, well, why do we have to run everything past Paul? And why does Paul get a say in all of this? So I, I can I can buy that uh, that they were at least at least Jason was very dubious about Paul. But maybe Alex, I'm not so sure. Yeah, yeah. I opened that relationship to where they they he formed that relationship with Jason and Alex. He would have done it, but I, I I said how loyal he was and how you know he would stick by you and they started that relationship i aligned with the right people jason alex paul and christmas we won if all the hohs besides jess and cody's week so Josh, yeah have you and paul had any sort of conversation about this uh type of the way that the jury was voting like the stuff that you're talking about now because when i spoke to him on finale night he didn't really seem receptive to this idea that he had misplayed anything in terms of jury management. He kept saying, uh, what was I supposed to do? Go give my whole game away that I would have, it wouldn't have worked if he would have done any of the things that we're talking about. Do you know, has he changed his opinion on any of these things since uh, the month or so that's gone by since the finale? No, to be honest with you, if we can be completely honest, from the moment Sweet. that we walked out, the game was done. <laughs> the game was done. I think okay. that now, you know, we have the interviews and you have the fans that love it and are involved. But when you play it, dude, you're exhausted with uh, with the game. We have not had that conversation, but we don't want to have that conversation. I think that we have a friendship and I think that we're going to continue to have that friendship. And what happened, happened. And um, he has his perspective and I have mine. But at the end of the day, we can't change what happened. You know, I ended up winning, and I won, and I have my reasoning behind why I think I won. But hands down, Paul will go down as one of the best players to play Big Brother. He played a great game, and he will be remembered for the game that he played. People can hate him. People can love him. But they cannot ignore the fact that he played an amazing game, and he had a lot of people fooled. Um, luckily, I always saw through that, and I always saw the game. But Paul never gave me a reason to go against him. I gave him my loyalty. He thought he could beat me at the end, and that's why he said he took me there when I was the deciding factor, and I took him there. <laughs> right. But uh, I, I always thought yeah. that uh, seriously, yeah, that given was funny. 
Given what you were saying during the week that Jason went home and then the week that Alex went home when you were HOH at Final Five because you were thinking about getting ready to Paul at that point or at least considering the idea, I thought, and you were always saying, you know what, I'm going to go to the Final Three and I'm going to cut Paul and take Christmas to the end. I thought Paul was lucky to at least get $50,000 yeah. yeah. out of it. You know, never mind 500000 Yeah, I think that, you know, I think that, None, none of us want to watch back. I'm going to watch some episodes and things like that. None of us want to watch back. We lived it. It was exhausting. It's mentally draining. But I think that he sh he should be proud of the game that he played. He played a hell of a game. He dude. should be. He, You're right. he, he's going to go down. Right now, the hype is that, oh, he played this shady game. Guys, he played Big Brother. He had no option but to play that aggressive game. I was my first time around, so I could have played a more – um, naive game where I'm being used and people have me in their pocket. And if I would have gone head to head with Paul, I would have gone home. So I knew that I had to play that angle because that right. was the best of my benefit. And that was the hand that I was dealt. If I, if he would have really, um, opposed a threat to me, it would have been a whole different ball game. And I don't think I would have made it to final two, but nobody, but that kid promised me final two. So I'm, I stayed true to who I was and I sat with him in the end and I won. And you could have done him the biggest favor in the world by voting him out third because then he would have been able to walk away from the season talking about how he should have been the person to win. Everybody would have been on board with that. Uh, you know, if you you could have still won again uh, versus Christmas, I think it would have been uh, pretty close. But that really would have been the best thing you could have done for him was take him out at third. Because then yeah. he wouldn't have to deal with the fact that he lost another another five to four votes. Like, oh, That's you would have won if you got yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah, brutal, brutal. Yeah, <laughs> so what, I know, right. What would you say? What would you say to to? I mean, even people like Mark and Elena that say that that uh, that Paul played a better game than he did. You do you agree with that or do you disagree? I think that okay. So I think that everybody had the opportunity to play the game that they had to play. Everybody was dealt their hand. Paul had to play an aggressive game and he had to play all those angles because he was a huge target. This was my first time around. Nobody has ever seen me play the game. So I had to play a naive game. Everybody thought that I was a recruit because that's what I instilled in everybody's mind. Hey, I'm just here to have fun. I'm just a crazy kid from Miami that got lucky on a TV show. No, I was a fan. I knew the game. I saw everybody's game and I was exposing and placing targets on everybody's back. Everybody thought that I was just fighting with everybody and I was a nutcase. No, I was calling you out because I wanted the all eyes to always be on the people that I wanted out. I wanted Mark out because Mark, I saw how good he was right. socially, how he inserted himself so well with people and how he was getting close to Jason. He had Cody. He had Paul. So I always had a target. It him. seems to me like you feel yeah. like that you did play the better game. Paul might have played the more aggressive game, but you played the better game because you got the votes at the end. I played the game. I played the hand that I was dealt. I adapted to the game and I saw what is going to be the best the best strategy for me to move forward in this game. I adapted each week and I did what was best for my game each week. If I had to lay low, I did. If I had to call somebody out, I did. So did he play a better game? If that's people's perspective than he did, he played a more aggressive, intense, upfront game. But um, essentially, if I fooled most of those people to think that I was just this crazy kid and I honestly knew the game and I downplayed myself and – you know, okay. they didn't catch on to it. I think that I played just as good of – we made it to the end. Right, you made it to the right. end, exactly. We made it to the end. They didn't make it. So the best people that played the game were me and Paul. Yeah, so okay. you, like that's my answer. <laughs> You're 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 a fan of the show, so uh, you know we do we do winner rankings all the time. Yeah. Uh, where would you place yourself in the winner rankings of Big oh, Brother? God. Listen, let's not even go there. I'm not big headed. <laughs> That's the right I'm answer, not, Josh. Yes. I'm not gassed up on myself. We have great <laughs> winners. We have great winners. I might go down as number 19. I really don't give a shit. But guess what? I'm up. I'm I'm in that ranking. I am more idea. than Eddie from season one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, higher. No, I'm higher. Joking. Okay, there you go. Yes. All right. Uh, here, I want to get into some of these questions from the fans. If there's anything that the fans asked us that we've already covered, uh, we'll just skip right through it. Taryn, did you have anything else on your list that you, I want to make sure that we uh, got to all your questions too? Um, yeah, I'm good. Okay. All right, uh, jump right in if you have anything else. Okay, this is the stuff that the fans have sent us in live here today. Uh, Ashley wants to know, can you ask Josh why he chose to team up with Christmas? From the outside, they seem like an odd pairing at first. And we got a lot of these questions, so uh, we could do a little bit of rapid fire. 
Um, a lot of people were playing Big Brother and forgot that you had to build relationships and build social connections in order to move forward in the game. I instantly built that with Christmas on week one. She's the only one that actually cared for me when I was going nuts and going crazy, and she was always there for me. So once I, I went into that house, if you watched my pre-show interviews, I said, I want to downplay my intelligence of the game and have people think that they can control me. And I also want to build genuine re connections and see which people give me loyalty, and in return, I'll give the same. Christmas gave me that, Paul gave me that, and Jason and Alex gave me that. And those are the people that I stuck by the whole game. Okay. Uh, this is a question that's from Sean, who says, uh, Josh, if Paul used the veto on Kevin in the Final Four and Kevin voted you out, who would you voted for in the end if it was Paul or Christmas? Paul. Okay. Hands down. Hands down. Yeah. All right. Greg says, uh, Josh, at any point in the house, did you get an inkling America had turned on Paul and no longer liked him? Now, again, I don't know if that's yeah. a blanket statement, but did you get the sense that the audience, uh, a yeah. lot of the people, yes. How I so? Said it to production, I said it to production in the DR once I didn't use the veto on Raven. When I didn't use the veto on Raven and I heard the crowd go, oh, I said, whoa. And I went inside and I'm like, guys, I think America wants me to turn on Paul. Because all week I was talking about I might take the shot. If I had the shot, I'll have the opportunity to take the shot. And when I didn't use that veto because I wanted to protect Christmas and Paul and myself, that's when I realized. And, and that's when I started. I, I didn't know for sure, but I started thinking about it. And I was like, okay, right. I think people want this to go a different route. That's really right. interesting because we hear about that a lot in terms of Big Brother Canada with, you know, especially with Netta and Ika this past season. Yeah. You don't hear it a lot in the U.S. version. Yeah, I mean, that the crowd just went, oh, like the whole crowd. You heard it in the house. And I instantly was like, that's weird. Like, why would Raven? What? So that's yeah. when I started thinking it has to be Paul because I was talking all week that I would take that movie. If, if, if I had the shot, I would take the movie and I would do that. Did that influence um, your vote that night then? Um, no, no, no. The vote was strategic. I knew that Paul and Christmas were going to vote to evict um, – Kevin and I did that rogue vote to. No, I could have voted for when when oh. Raven uh, when you didn't use the veto on Raven and yeah, then they were, uh, you, yeah, but then you yeah. voted to keep Raven right yeah you, yeah, you, yeah you, no, Josh voted out Kevin the other two uh, okay. uh, Paul and Christmas yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Raven. Paul yeah, and okay. Christmas voted out Raven and it was strategic for me to vote out Kevin because I wanted um, Raven to think you know that oh I wanted to keep her and it was on them that was strategy and Paul knew it right off the bat he's like he did that for his game. And then I went into the DR and right. I said, they really like let you have that. Like, yeah, they, they, Christmas, have... they would not let you live that down that you no. actually, like, you went against the team, which I yeah. couldn't. Christmas said team one more time. Yeah. I'm gonna throw my computer in the street. Right. Anyway, well, it was funny because Raven, Raven left the game thinking that Paul had voted to keep her. <laughs> Well, that comes into this next question then, because Mike Zahn asks on Twitter, uh, Josh, you said on the feeds that you had Maven's vote versus Paul. Were you shocked to learn that they were campaigning for Paul in the jury house? Um, I, if those people were saying in the house that, you know, they didn't want to see a bet win. I knew that they were extremely close. I didn't know that they were so naive to his game, man. I didn't think so. Uh, Matt would literally sit back and observe. At least I thought he was observing. <laughs> so I thought that he was a little bit onto Paul's game because he was onto mine. He was like, Hey, Josh is not as dumb as we think he is. Hey, Josh is not as bad as comp as he, he was always onto what I was doing. So I was like, Oh, he's seeing Paul's game. Um, so uh, yeah, I thought that they would vote for me. Um, and even before Matt left, I told him, I told Matt, um, Matt, you know, the Donatos, because he would always reference the pots and pans, the Evo Dick. I'm like, listen, the Donatos are some of my favorite players, and I'm a fan of the show. He was shocked <laughs> on live show before he was left. He was shocked. He was like, what? Um, so I'm like, okay, so I think I have Matt. And, and all that stuff. And, and just to know that they were rallying for him. I mean, good for them, dude. All right. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Scott St. Pierre uh, is asking us a question that this is from. Uh, did you know the pots and pans? Pots and pans theme was part of the public domain, so production uh, wouldn't say anything. Yeah, the song that you chose was that intentional uh, to come in with the circus music? No, production would literally shut me down every single time that I would play it. Like, stop singing, stop that. And then I guess it caught hype with the fans, and then they started letting me, and they're like, they're like, and the girls are like, do your, the, you know, do your thing. So I was like, I would do my thing and they would let me. And I'm like, oh shit, I'm guessing that it's fine now. But in the beginning, they were not, that started with the pool games. 
And I would try to throw Mark off his game, and I was like, da, 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 da. and they would stop me all the time. And then once they started letting, let, you know, they didn't Yeah, there was anymore, definitely like, oh. a point in time where they stopped it, and you basically up, could yeah. do it. You had carte blanche to do whatever you wanted to as far as that song goes. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, St Stacked wants to know, can you verify if everyone in jury saw all the goodbye messages off camera? Did anybody tell him? Well, in the finale, Julie played it like, oh, look at all these goodbye messages. But I know that there was at least uh, a couple that we didn't see on the live show yeah. of things that you were saying. So do you know who got to see your Every goodbye messages? And who everybody, saw, everybody saw the goodbye messages. Um, when you're in jury there's a mystery here with uh, when they get to see them. They see them when they, I think. We need to talk to some of the losers. I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can get into that. But yeah, they did see the goodbye messages. Okay. Oh, God. Rob, uh, this is from Cam Perry, who's on my team for So You Think You Can Podcast. Yes. He said, if Josh <laughs> had another chance to play the game, like if they brought you back next year, Josh, uh, what would you do differently? Um, I obviously can't play a naive game, and I can't, uh, you know, play the the dumb role or have somebody controlling me because I get America knows that already, and the fans are going to know that. That's the thing. Paul had to play an aggressive game, and I think if I do get the opportunity to play again, I'm going to have to play a way more aggressive game. Would I make it as far as he did? Hell no. I think that I would be evicted <laughs> pre-jury. I really do think I'll be evicted pre-jury, but I won't go around um, – definitely not going around with the pots and pans and going crazy and all that stuff unless i have to right um, but yeah definitely play a more aggressive more aggressive game and not you know have people think that i'm in their back pocket be more upfront. i feel well, like you, you would have you would have a little bit more agency in the game like you you feel like you know what i'm a player here and i'm a yeah. winner and i'm not going to be talked down to by these other people yeah yeah i think that you know the funny thing is that I, I would let people do that. I, I mean, I would let Alex think she would be like, oh, you know, I got you. To the, I was like, okay, okay, you can think that. I literally did not care what people thought. If they okay. thought that they were using me, that I sucked, that I wasn't a competitor, that I wasn't that, that was all an advantage for me to continue to move forward because they weren't threatened by me. So I didn't care. Um, but I can't play that angle. I would have to play a more um, – and that was, that was strategy. That was a strategic gameplay where I just – sat back and I play naive and I let them think that they had control of me and all that. I think that I would have to play a more aggressive and more upfront game. Will you at least watch your season back if you are asked back, uh, unlike some people? <laughs> I am going to watch my season back. A fans continue to ask me to watch back and watch back. I am going to watch back. I, I'll probably do you now. I'm going to pick episodes here and there. Okay. If you, if you right now, for sure, not. The house, though. If you go back into the house, you need to watch everything because you need yeah, to see what watch. happened. You need to see what I, you did wrong. Yeah, so I, I, Josh, you, yeah, Josh, you won the game, but you didn't play a perfect game. I mean, I'm I a know. fan of you. One hundred percent. I actually. It, I did might, not play a perfect game. It might be more helpful. Will you go back and listen to every day of Karen's <laughs> live feed update of, uh, <laughs> of, of you know, 80 some odd days of uh, live feeds that we got? Deal. <laughs> yeah, and I just want to say, uh, Josh, that going into the finale, I had you winning five to four. And uh, no this, way! this guy over here had he you got, losing. He it perfect, though. Oh! Eight to one. Yeah. Thank you. Eight to one. Yeah, that's because there were leaks, and he took the leaks into account. I and took I the leak. I knew. I knew that the jury house was bitter. So he yeah. played himself. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron played himself. Okay. Uh, awesome. This is uh, a question from Stacked. Was Josh concerned about Raven getting too far in the game and getting a sympathy vote? Yeah, uh, Josh. Was that something that was talked yeah. about? Yeah, this is. Yep. We want to know this because, like, it seemed like you guys were getting irritated with Raven yeah. in the house. Yeah. You were saying, you know, like, I don't believe this girl. All the things she's driving me crazy. And, but yet, everybody seemed so concerned about her getting to the to the end. So, where where's the truth in that? Um, I think that you know we all were. This is how I looked at Raven because I've dealt with people that are like, like her family members and friends and things like that. I think that Raven's really young. And I think that being on TV and all that, you yearn for attention and you want attention and all this stuff. Sure. And I think that she, she's young, man. And, and, and I drove people nuts. I, and she drove people nuts and she, she would get annoying at times. But I think that people were scared to voice that because they, they, they felt like she was sensitive and they didn't want to hurt her feelings. That's exactly how I felt. I didn't want to hurt her feelings. Sometimes I wanted to be like, hey, Raven, come on. Cut, so cut if, is there, if she got to the end against anybody, could she have gotten your vote? I think that no, my vote, no. Okay. okay. No, not my vote. But I think, <laughs> if Raven, I think if Raven would have been next to me at the end, I think Raven could have beaten me. Uh, I don't uh, know. 
Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. It was Fake definitely. News. It was definitely <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? I, I don't know. I think that the sympathy thing was definitely going through my the back of my mind, and I was like, okay, she's gonna get sympathy votes at the end. Okay, and I'm right. gonna, I have to get her out. Yeah. Sounds sounds like a yes, Taryn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a, this, is, this is a question from Jeff. Would you rather fight a giant mosquito one time and get your ass whipped by yeah. it? Yes! Or would you like the relationship that you have and never get bit again? Or do you like the relationship that you have with mosquitoes right now? <laughs> <laughs> I would beat the shit out of a big mosquito. <laughs> With pots and pans and meatballs. <laughs> yeah, the pans would actually be really effective on yeah. the mosquito. <laughs> that was an awesome question. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we, had, we had a lot of fun with that. Yeah, we, that never gets old. Yeah. Oh, God. Okay. How would Cameron have done if he stayed in the house instead of Paul coming in? Oh, Cameron would have left. Yeah, Cameron would have left week one. <laughs> oh, it was that bad? Cameron was an oddball, dude. Cameron was from the moment he walked. Dude, he was doing a strip tease. He would walk up to you. We don't. I'll give you loyalty. You have my word. I promise you're my boy. You're my dude. I'm not going to turn against you. Fool, you don't know me. You don't know me. What are you saying? Yeah, it was a great draft there, Taryn. Good job with that one. Well, I, <laughs> speaking of Cameron, I, uh, I just talked to him for the Taryn show, which will be uh, released oh, okay. later tonight. And uh, he has a very different story. So okay, this uh, is such a good bookend of the first yeah. person out and the last person out of the house. <laughs> yeah, Cameron. Cameron would have left, dude. Uh, yeah, people were not. People were not. Uh, there was no. Can he? he he was a little odd and a little awkward, but I mean, it was the first few hours. So what do you expect? I was odd, awkward, and crazy. Right. So I'm like, I can't blame the kid. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, Taryn, any, Josh. any other questions for Josh? I think we're good. Yeah. Yeah, Josh, I want to say, uh, you know, I went back and watched the first episode because I honestly couldn't remember if you hit the button for the $25,000 or not. You no. did not. And you said in the diary room that you didn't come for $25,000. You came for $500,000. And honey, boom. You it. so boom. <laughs> yeah. uh, Josh, it was a big deal on, well, I, should, or I should say a big deal, but at least the story. Uh, when Paul slapped you in the face, uh, oh. it was reported on Whatever. TMZ about how Paul slapped another big brother contestant <laughs> across the face uh, what was it like joke. coming out of the house and learning things like that that was such a joke um i had i think it was a report i think yeah in the backyard interview they said that like you you were on tmz for this and that i'm like dude that's a joke um people don't realize 92 days 24 hours no phones no distractions nothing you build genuine relationships and friendships dude um that's how me and my brother, you know, we go around and we'll slap each other and things like that. Me and Paul became really close and built a genuine good friendship. I don't think that was his intent to slap me and shit like that. It was like kind of like, you no. know, like a, like a like like that, like a love tap right. or whatever. Yeah, so okay. I was, think that it was blown out of proportion. And it, it was, was it was headlines. blown out of proportion. It was yeah. blown out of proportion because the fans at that point were so anti-Paul. They wanted yeah. anything, anything to get him out of the house. They would have like grabbed onto. I mean, I wasn't the biggest fan of Paul, but even I could tell that it was it was it was, it was much ado joke. about nothing. Now, yeah. Josh, joke, yeah. Have you offered to Paul if he goes back for a third season? Will you <laughs> give him any coaching before he goes back <laughs> into the game no. for a third time? <laughs> no, I don't. Man, the kid's crazy. Crazy enough that he will jump back in there for a third time. I don't think that he. I think that he will learn off of some of the mistakes that he did, and I think that he's a smart. He's one of the smartest people I know, and I think that he played a great game. I don't think he needs any coaching from anyone. I think that he knows exactly what he would need to do. Okay. And to be honest with you, I think that he'll make it a final three again. <laughs> the final, yeah. Maybe. Hopefully. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I have one season off from 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 uh, from Paul. Yeah, Josh. Yeah. Josh, I had one more question. A lot of people in my on my Twitter feed are very yeah. concerned about this trip. They're very concerned about your money, Josh. They want yeah. you to hold on to it. Uh, they're very concerned about you paying for Paul and Christmas to go on some trip together. So, uh, are is is Christmas going to? Uh, does she have the entire itinerary planned, or are you going to have some say in this? Guys, oh God, this is a joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a joke. This Listen, is what I get, Josh. These are the questions America wants. Are, uh, yeah, we are definitely going to take trips together. We're definitely going to go and travel together. But we never said, oh, were they going to pay for the whole thing? Okay. I'm extremely smart with my money. Okay. I am like a bank. I'm like a bank. And I'm right now I'm letting it sit. And as time, there's time. I don't need to rush into anything. We're definitely going to travel. But, you know, they're going to bring their own money. It's not like I'm going to be splurging. Watch the season right. first. That's all we're saying. 
Yeah, actually, <laughs> do that yeah. first. Watch the season. Josh, uh, Taryn did an interview with Ian Terry uh, on the Taryn show that you might find enjoyable because he talked about winning the money and, you know, like what that's like and what he ultimately did with it. And he still has most of it saved and put away. So, uh, no, yeah, I think everybody, everybody would love to, to see that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's uh, just give you guys a quick heads up about what's coming up. Uh, Lots of stuff going on on post-show recaps, including uh, Fear the Walking Dead, the latest Star Trek, Mr. Robots coming back, Curb Your Enthusiasm. Lots of stuff going on there on our sister site for Scripted TV post-show recaps. You missed a lot of good TV this summer as well, Josh. Uh, (laughs) Check check out the Taron Show. Cameron is going to be joining uh, Taryn. Uh, can you give us anything juicy uh, from the, your interview with Cameron, Taryn? Uh, we discovered his sister is a mastermind. Uh, he talked all about the uh, the devastating disappointment of leaving the house uh, after 12 hours. It was actually pretty fun. I enjoyed the, the talk with Cameron. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, plus all of our Survivor coverage. Uh, that, Josh, do you watch any Survivor? I have not. I've seen a few episodes, but I, I'm going to jump on this season because it sounds good. And they keep comparing this guy to me, Alan. I keep getting mentions on my screen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. What's going oh on with God. Alan? Yeah. I'm like, what's God. going on with Alan? But he's the Alan crazy guy. So. That's right. Alan the meatball. So I'm definitely going to watch this season and see what's going on with him. Okay. Uh, check out the RHAP B and B with Mike Bloom and Liana Boris from this weekend with special guest Ali Lasher plus David Bloomberg and Jessica Lewis talk about why the latest player lost spoiler free since 2003. And of course, uh, Akiva Akiva Winokur joined me on the voicemails this week for a mini Survivor hot takeoff and much more. Uh, and then uh, tomorrow, a uh, Wednesday night, I'll be back with Stephen Fishback live on the Survivor Know It Alls all. Uh, when you subscribe to robinswebsite.com slash iTunes. All right, Josh, thank you so much. Uh, this was uh, really fantastic to go through everything with you. Uh, nice. Do we have I a hashtag it. for uh, everybody that made it to the end of this interview? The hashtag? Yeah, yeah what's the hashtag? I, well, we're looking for a hashtag. He always puts a hashtag at the end of the episode, uh, Josh. So uh, um, it can be anything you want it to be as long as it's clean. <laughs> hashtag, they all played themselves. Okay. okay. Or, or Taryn <laughs> played himself. Yeah. They all played themselves. <laughs> hey, thank right. you. guys, this was fun, man. I really enjoyed this. And all right, great stuff. To uh, everything down. Josh, uh, okay, so I just uh, why don't you give out the information for your event uh, coming up and anything else you want to promote? So I will be – first of all, I'm coming out on the Bold and the Beautiful. I don't know if you guys watch it, October 24th. But I would be in – I'm going to be in Edmonton, Canada – on October 20th at the ranch, um, hosting a party out there. It's a meatball madness. It's going to be fun. Then I'm going to be at the Edmonton Mall. Also, we're going to have a meet and greet there. And then at Cowboys in Calgary. So it's going to be fun. Okay. Check that all out. And then what are those social media handles? Social media. My Instagram is Josh underscore Martinez underscore. Um, Facebook. Two underscores. Two underscores. They stole my you name. You played yourself. That's I terrible. played myself big time. <laughs> uh, my Facebook is Josh BB19. Twitter Josh M BB19. Okay. All right. Great stuff, Josh. All right. Uh, Brent, uh, Taryn, excellent work as per usual. Great interview, Josh. You really Thank had a lot guys. of energy, a lot of fun. You seem like you like the heaviness of the game is behind you. It's You're just done. here to have a great time. But yeah. you spoke honestly to most of the things that I had questions about. So I really yeah. appreciate that. Great job. Thank you, guys. You guys were awesome, dude. And I heard you guys were fans. So, I, I mean, you can have me off on whenever. Yeah, well, we'll, right. we'll have you back next season, or even for a Celebrity Big Brother, you can come on and uh, recap a yeah. show with us. Dope, let's do it. Okay. okay. All right. All right, guys. Up, have Taren. a good night. Thank Taren, you. Anything else? No, I'm just happy to be talking Big Brother. I've missed it. Okay. <laughs> so my, my heart. All right, everybody. Thanks so much to Scott St. Pierre behind the scenes. Have a great night. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye, guys.